أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا ولما رأى المؤمنون الأحزاب قالوا هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله وصدق الله ورسوله وما زادهم إلا إيمانا وتسليما من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا ليجزي الله الصادقين بصدقهم ويعذب المنافقين إن شاء إن شاء أو يتوب عليهم إن الله كان غفورا رحيما صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله أجمل فاروقي سام uh now we are going to go with the formal proceedings of this condolence meeting uh, in memory of uh, one of the great personalities with which uh, allah almighty had blessed this ummah uh, i would like to say that from the day adam or his uh, progeny were put on this planet earth they were never left unguided by almighty allah and uh, there is a chain of prophets from adam to up, up to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they carried the message and after that we have found various great personalities they are joining the humanity they are from blessed by almighty and they awaken the humanity at different moments of time they turn their attention towards different issues different problems they make them understand many things which are tangled otherwise and i believe that in the contemporary world one of the such personalities was dr abdul hamid ahmed abu sulaiman and he was born in 1936 in makka and then he was educated uh, in cairo uh, he and and then he he was he um, then he had his uh, phd Uh, in in international relations from university of pennsylvania usa in 1973 and he had a uh, very good uh, you know contributions in terms of functioning uh, holding different positions like the secretary of state planning committee of saudi arabia long back in 1963 till 1964 and he was the secretary general of world assembly of muslim youth from 1973 to 1979 he was the chairman of department of political science at king saud university saudi arabia from 1982 to 1984 and he is the founder member of the association of muslim social scientists uh, when it was established in 1972 and initial uh, board of directors of the foundation he was in 1983 and then the president of the association of muslim social scientists from 1985 to 1987 he was the rector of the international islamic university malaysia uh, from 1989 to 1999 uh, for for a decade 
Uh, and then uh, he was then lastly the chairman of the board of trustees, uh, chairman of the board and trustee of the International Institute of Islamic Thought, uh, uh, US and uh, its former president and founding member. Uh, and uh, I, I may mention here that he had uh, written a, a good number of books on various issues. I'm not going into them, but I can say uh, that uh, the, the, the books, the titles of the books uh, show um, that he was a man of vision. Uh, he had the probing qualities of a movement. Uh, he could identify the issue uh, and then understand them and then comment on them, communicate on them, and also awaken his contemporary friends uh, that attention is required to be given to them and how the different issues are to be met with and faced. Uh, so that's uh, how uh, we have, uh, we can have a brief uh, introduction, uh, but uh, the, uh, there is a good number of panelists with me today. And I, uh, I would say that they will throw light on different aspects uh, of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Ahmed uh, Abu Sulaiman. Uh, the list is uh, long, uh, but not long from the point of view of uh, when it is uh, Dr. Uh, Abu Sulaiman, because uh, he had uh, a good uh, impact no, in, the, in the contemporary school. world, uh, and, and they include Dr. Oh, Muhammad Manzur Alam from India, Datuk Shri Anwar Ibrahim from Malaysia. Uh, we have Dr. Hisham Al Talib from US, and we have Professor Umar Hassan Kasoli, senior, uh, senior from Saudi Arabia. We have Dr. Ahmed Alwani from US. And uh, we have uh, Mr. Siraj Hussain, uh, I, IAS retired from India. Uh, we have Dr. Ayman Abu Sulaiman and, and others. I would not like to name now them, but I believe that to use the time the best, uh, I would like to invite the speakers one by one to give their comments and pay homage uh, to uh, Dr. Uh, Abdul Hamid Ahmed Abu Sulaiman. Uh, and and, and the, the need is to understand the personalities the best, then we understand the principles the best, and then uh, we, we carry forward the legacy. Uh, that's the basic purpose, and, and that's how uh, I would begin. And to begin with, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Muhammad Manzur Alam uh, from India, who is the chairman of Institute of Objective Studies, New Delhi, uh, and uh, has had a long career right from the beginning, I, I, I suppose, from the school days. He, he is uh, wedded with the issues which humanity is facing in the underprivileged and others uh, and, in, uh, and in general, uh, anybody, wherever there is human suffering, he has his heart there. He has his mind there. And ultimately, he uh, brought up a, 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 a good institute in Delhi that's Institute of Objective Studies, which is looking academically to various issues which are faced by the common man in India, by, uh, by uh, anybody, uh, underprivileged and also privileged people. So because it is the Institute of Objective Studies, it has an objective observation, objective research on almost all the aspects, socially, politically, uh, economically and uh, then otherwise important. I invite Dr. Muhammad Manzur Alam Saab to kindly uh, uh, give your uh, this contribution uh, to pay homage to this great personality, uh, Abdul Hamid uh, Ahmed Abu Sulaiman, who recently passed away. And we take uh, him as a mentor uh, because of his qualities and because of being a very prolific author and because of being a very committed uh, human being to humanity. Dr. Muhammad Manzur Alam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah khairan wa khairan jaza. Uh, to pay the homage to dearest mentor, Dr. Abdul Habib Abu Suleiman, is not easy for me, but as Datu Sri Anwar sent message that I should start as a host of this program. So I just accepted his advice 
and inshallah whatever i will say a few things uh at this uh, especially to dr ani datu shri anwar you see one couplet was said by allama iqbal and that couplet is a 100% fit to dr abdul hamid abu sulaiman rahmahullah hazaro saal nargis अपनी बेनूरी पे रोती है बड़ी मुश्किल से होता है चमन में दीदर पैदा फॉर ए थाउजेंड ईयर्स दी डेफोडिल्स हैज बीन लेमेंटिंग इट्स ब्लाइंडनेस विथ ग्रेट डिफिकल्टी द वन विथ ट्रू विजन इज बॉर्न इन द गार्डन एंड दिस वॉज द Dr Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman as if this couplet is said by Iqbal for him especially which i just recited uh, <clears throat> for my you know i met dr abdul hamid abu suleiman first in late 1970 when i was looking for job in saudi arabia in uh, he was secretary general of wami at uh, share fardadak riyadh office afterwards i had an opportunity to meet meet him frequently ever up to the last year before corona i went to him to his house he hosted dinner we sat long time to discuss different aspects and that is a really something uh, very very thoughtful for me and i'm working on that line too <clears throat> he was always emphasized when i whenever i met he used to say i am a makkawi using the word makka as a makkawi who believes in universal brotherhood there is no scope at all he was saying for prejudice biasness tribalism of any nature and his behavior his action always meet always fulfilling that kind of things of universal brotherhood so uh, he emphasized that and i really appreciate that i always talked about he he always talked about equality universal universal brotherhood and universal justice for everyone both men and women together he was a man of extraordinary traits he was an exemplary muslim and reformed minded intellectual activist he was a builder of institutions educationally intellectually and physically he was author of many critical and valuable books which i am not going to explain because that's books are already known to all of us and <clears throat> he works as an inspiration to muslim scholars awakening their minds urging them to find solution within and stop impugning others to their downfall he was an example of critical thinking and progressive outlook he was the most he was he was the must Uh, which was the must for creating a revival and re- re- renaissance in the muslim world his scholarship was infused and manifested with the integration of knowledge he was one of the best enlightened men and one of the most intellectuals educator and one of the one of one of the great giant 
giant reformers. He spent <clears throat> he spent his, his whole life for development of education of Islamic world and always advocated a change of Muslim societies and knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah. He had a noble vision and mission of comprehensive Islamic reforms project with uh, reform of thoughts and education and all his work are dedicated to to the realization of this his monumental work are the living testimony of his intellectual acumen at personal level this is the very important point i am mentioning at personal level he was having highest scale of humility but at the level of knowledge, theory, and Islamic approach, he was high on a scale, deep-rooted and with proper sources. He never compromised about the theory, theory, theory of Islam, uh, theory of knowledge. He was a visionary, broad-minded, and critical thinker. Once he make up his mind based on studies, he present those ideas very confidently and firmly without ever minding that who are going to be pleased with those ideas and who are going to be against, for example, beating of wives. That was one of the wonderful booklets that's uh, very, very important. Many ulama was not happy. He was having highest aesthetic sense in most of the things in lives like building material, courses, courses of studies, selection of books, etc. Because of this, he used to say to me especially, you are having only one Taj Mahal, but I am building many Taj Mahals in IIUM. Which, he, which, which is a really a marvelous combination of aesthetic sense and building of a generation and, and prove it to be true. That is why since I met him late 1970s, I always treated, treated him as a philosopher guide, a mentor, a teacher, which in Sanskrit language called Guru. And I use this, uh, the, used to call him as Guru in public as well as in private. And he possesses all the qualities which the word Guru consists, in, consists of in Sanskrit. Uh, he visited India four times in different IUS program. In year 1992, he delivered a lecture on issue of child development at Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. In year 2001, the most, the month of February, he again visited India and conferred with a delit uh, in, by Jamia, Jamia Hamdard and delivered two lectures at Aligarh, Child Development in Islamic Perspective and Violence and Islam. In year 2007, he attended two international, two-day two international conference organized by the IUS on power of peace in a globalizing world held at Delhi. And he also shooted for a film, which we have already delayed many times, but recently also only a few days ago, we relayed again, sent to, to, the, to the peoples to whom, you, whom we know, uh, suited for film. Uh, its title was IOS Future Focus, Documenting Islam's Vision and Visionaries, Values and Movement, covering different aspects of his life and thought why, for example, why, why am I a Muslim? 
back to the childhood, understanding the Quran and concepts, learning from the Holy Quran, family and parenting, education and values, marital discord and disharmony with the, what is a human nature, crime and punishment, etc. In 2010, the month of March, he participated in two day international conference on crisis of Muslim minds held at Patna, delivered a lecture, Quranic perspective. Uh, global Civilization at Jamia Hamdar, New Delhi, and uh, delivered another lecture on parenting and child development of uh, at IUS, New Delhi. Uh, now, it is, uh, it is the duty of all people who are attached to this, to his idea, his, his, his thought and his uh, knowledge, his uh, reading material, IIT, IIUM, IUS, they, they all must think of how to fulfill his dream, his uh, in changing global scenario, especially in view of pandemic and the changing technological uh, advancement. Let us work hard of these points which I have just mentioned. Hopefully, inshallah, IIUM or Triple IT will fulfill all those things which can be worked together and planned in a better form, inshallah. Jazakamullah khairan wa khairan jaza. Thank you all of you who are participating and hopefully, inshallah, we will be working much more Enthusiast, enthusiastically and to achieve our target, inshallah, because the reforms is the need of the time. Jazakamullah khairan wa khairan jaza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah, Dr. Muhammad Manzur Alam, Chairman, Institute of Objective Studies. Uh, I do find a ray which you have. Uh, taken from uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Ahmed Abu Suleiman. I believe that he has uh, been a great man of uh, sentiment, faith, and welfare for the world. Uh, if uh, we, we have met uh, twice in the programs here, uh, which you had organized at IOS, I believe if I would meet Abu uh, Suleiman once again, I would definitely ask him a question. Tell me, tell me, and tell me that when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had 1400 years before delivered uh, this Khutbah uh, Hajjatul uh, Vida, were you actually hearing that? You were carrying that much sentiment with you? You were uh, going to the whole of the world to carry the message which Prophet gave at that time. Uh, he was, uh, Prophet talked of the different sections of the uh, society, children, women, knowledge, equality, uh, and so many other things. And, and I think that great sentiment and faith and then uh, that love for humanity, love for a development of everybody on this planet Earth, I don't think that kind of uh, a reflection is found in elsewhere as we find it in late Dr. Abdul Hamid Ahmed Abu Sulaiman. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad Manzur Alam Sam. Uh, you did apprise us about his uh, being uh, inclined towards uh, India and uh, then towards IOS. Uh, I believe that he has been a great friend of this nation and he tried to look for the people so that they develop in knowledge, uh, in, in international relations and, and the best, have the best in the contemporary world. God bless you. Now I have with me uh, His Excellency Datu Shari Anwar Ibrahim, former Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia and also a uh, leader of opposition he has been. Uh, and uh, what we find in him, uh, he is a great academic. Uh, he is not merely a politician. And he is a, a politician with values. 
he can sacrifice he's a man of sacrifice he can sacrifice power he can uh, sacrifice anything for maintenance of the values for the nation building and uh, for having a worldwide arousing of a value oriented society An intellectually very sound society whenever i heard him uh, he talks of knowledge he talks of uh, excellence he, he talks of welfare he talks of peace uh, and i think much can be said uh, but uh, at the moment uh, we have to save time uh, for the comments of the speakers i invite uh, uh, his excellency datu shay anwar ibn ibrahim former deputy prime minister of malaysia kindly uh, may pay your homage your tribute to late abdul hamid ahmed abu sulaiman ഹമീദ്ര my pronoun arabic pronunciation including his name he said brother anwar it is sulaiman not sulaiman because the malays used to mention the name sulaiman uh, this is short uh, power man he always corrected me and i used to joke with him abul hamid you are rector i am the president of the university to remind <laughs> he is a lovely brother he is other than his um, intellectual prowess uh, he is uh, a man of uh, a passionate very passionate about friendship about values about ethics um i of course uh, had um, a terrible uh, experience uh, particularly when i was in prison and he had to leave and i thought that was um a very sad episode a major loss to the country and true enough we have never recovered the prestige that abul hamid managed to achieve when he was uh, leading uh, or architect at the university but um he's um, passion for cultural reform based on the quranic world view uh is is particularly relevant here in the context of tipaiti um philosophy and objectives and from that time from a very early period i remember since uh, about 75 when i was in prison <laughs> i was too many times in prison and he gave a, a compelling a case for cultural reform and in order to achieve that we must discard an approach to islam based on the fiqh mentality and that i tell you um was so uh, compelling that abim leaders then used that program and uh, to um articulate further deliberate further and um try to exp- and understand and ac- explain uh, islam in a more comprehensive in the tasawwur islam in a many and meaningful manner and not to be uh, captivated or encapsulated by a very uh, blinkered view only on the fiqh to understand the islamic world view the second which is also paramount i think um i wouldn't say as much as uh, his experience in university etc because this has been said earlier but the second is of course his uh, argument on ru'ya arabiya which i mentioned uh, briefly in the last discourse um which is of course is khaldunian is um uh, an expansion of uh, umran badawi because uh, he has been a, a strong critic a devastating critic uh, against um, an uh, a more 
ultra conservative desert worldview. Um, initially, it was explained by Khaldun as Umar Badawi, but he talked about a desert worldview because you cannot embark on a meaningful reform if your mind, your attitude, your understanding of culture is still controlled by the limited environment uh, and not having the capacity to initiate reform. There is a strong resistance to change. And this, of course, he well elaborated in his Quranic worldview, um, springboard for cultural reform, which I think was, was a very important text. And I have done uh, some uh, copious notes and uh, comment, commentary uh, at the time when I was in uh, prison recently. But um, although he is strong against Takli, he is mindful of the fact that many of the Western educated intellectuals and elite have the, the tendency to be too absorbed animate by the Western secular concept. Therefore, he says, while rejecting taqlid, he cannot be talfiq. You see, uh, the strength of Abdul Hamid is he gives these um, concepts, key concepts, and kept on repeating, elaborating that in his writings, in his lectures, until it becomes, uh, uh, the, the, there is a, a, a capacity uh, for our general followers in his da'wah to uh, grasp and understand these concepts. Now, I know there, there are many other scholars here. I'm not, I'm having many hats. Uh, 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 Abdul Hamid always joked with me. He, he doesn't like politicians. So I have a, a huge problem with him. I always tell Faika, I think Ayman and uh, Mona would understand that. So we have big arguments. I see, he says, Anwar, you know. But I say, are you against? He says, no. I say, if I'm not in politics, I'm, I wasn't the Minister of Education, I later Minister of Finance, you wouldn't have, you would not have that university. He says, yes, I grant that. But you can't deny the fact that it must begin by education, by cultural reform. And then he gave me an example of Salahuddin Al Ayubi. And that has um, then uh, generated so much interest uh, in me to read all the books I could find on Salahuddin. It was Abdul Hamid that initiated me to this subject because he says Salahuddin is only popular in the general, uh, among the general ummah on this military prowess. But don't forget the fact for the first 10 years, it was Quranic education, it is tarbiyah in the mosque, it is inculcating the strong spirit and character, the Islamic character, akhlaq, ethics. Then he entered into this arrangement, a measure of tolerance with Christian provinces, etc. before he could emerge as the great Salahuddin al-Ayubi. Uh, and then, of course, I am indebted to Abdul Hamid uh, for that sort of uh, compelling thesis uh, to suggest that whatever uh, profession you are in or involved in, which, is, which are important in many ways, you can't deny the, the importance of basic education and understanding uh, of Islam and Islamic worldview, which he encapsulated and later also elaborated brilliantly by Sheikh Taha Jabir al-Alwani on the Manhaj al-Quran. Uh, and I think um, that, to my mind, uh, should suffice my introductory remarks for tonight, um, because Abul Hamid has been a legendary figure. And Malaysia is most fortunate because he spent at least a decade here, although he comes and goes before and after, but one full decade. And I happen to be the greatest beneficiary because of my position at that time and my friendship, my invitation to him, 
I, and, and I tell you, I wouldn't exaggerate. It's not all nice. I have massive arguments with him, bitter quarrels that uh, brothers in Tripa IT, Hisham and Jamal had to try and uh, mediate. Uh, not, not in a personal sense, but then I think because he wants to uh, produce uh, and, and um, a, a, a spectacular campus in this university, both the main campus and the medical faculty. And I, as the, a politician, have to be seen to be fair to all the universities in this country. And, um, I, and he, he said, um, but this is Islamic University. <laughs> I said, yes, but the others are Malaysian University. So, so he says, I know you, you, between, a choice between Malaysian University and Islamic University, which do you choose? I said, I choose both. Otherwise I wouldn't survive as a politician. I mean, these are examples of this, this um, wit and um, brilliance of uh, Abul Hami that managed to compel me, force me, um, not only persuade, but because uh, without his personal uh, presence, had I uh, had worked with other rectors, I don't think they would be that rough against me. But Abul Hamid, as the, I call him a Saudi sheikh, he was rough and tough with me for good reasons. Nothing personal, as I said earlier, when he came, when he invited him, just one phone call, Abul Hamid, please come now. For what is it to become director of the university? He said, are you serious? I said, yes. When? And he said, you know, this and that. I said, look, you've been talking about ideas. You were talking about the reform. Do it. Am I given a free hand? Yes, free hand with me in charge. I was joking with him. And he just came. No question about any other interests, any other conditions. And mashallah, he was great. We have lost a great mind, but one great news, good news, I'll have to inform you. In the last few days, uh, I met uh, the brothers in Abim, some from the university, and uh, we have decided therefore to have a series of uh, seminars to ensure that the ideas and legacy of Lahami remains. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khairan kathiran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair. Datu Shri Anwar Ibrahim. Uh, we are grateful to you for giving uh, a good visage, uh, a reflection of thought, personal experiences. Uh, as a committed uh, educationist, as a committed uh, a reformer uh, and uh, with all the qualities he has been. I would have liked to comment on all these aspects, but we have to save time for the panelists. And uh, I again express uh, uh, my gratitude and on behalf of uh, IOS that we are grateful to you for joining this meeting and uh, giving grace to the occasion and also uh, paying tribute to the great personality which we lost. And uh, uh, I believe that with all you together, uh, IOS shall continue to carry the best of uh, the messages of these great people and uh, keep the humanity benefiting uh, from the thought uh, and from, from the best of the ideas of these great personalities. Now, now I invite, uh, Dr. Hisham Al-Talib, uh, President, International Institute of Islamic Thought, USA. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Hisham Yahya Al-Talib uh, was born in uh, Mosul, Iraq in 1940, grew up in uh, a religious uh, Muslim family. Uh, Dr. Al-Talib graduated uh, from high school in his own native place uh, with Dr. Jamal uh, Barzini, uh, his close uh, high school friend and uh, uh, from the 10th grade itself in 1959, uh, they shifted to United Kingdom at the age of 17 and attended Liverpool University. Uh, and they studied engineering. Uh, there is much to be said, but I invite uh, Dr. Hisham Al-Talib directly uh, as a graceful 
person with us. Uh, we wish him a long life and uh, share his vivas on the occasion uh, uh, when we are having this condolence meet uh, in memory of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Ahmed Abu Suleiman. Over to Dr. Hisham Al Talib. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wala udwana illa ala dhalimeen, wala hawla wala quwata illa billahi al Ali al Azim. My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, kullu man alayha fan, wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dul jalali wal ikram. Kullu nafsin daiqatul maut, thumma ilayna turja'oon. I'll speak about the Abdul Hamid I knew for 52 years. I like to tell stories, no wonder. One third of the Quran is about stories because they are very impactful. In 1969, April, I attended uh, an MSA regional conference in the East Coast in New York State. And in Salat al-Maghrib, when we finished, I turned to my right and I said, my bro brother, my name is Hisham al-Talib from Iraq. He said, my name is Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman from Mecca. Then he said, what are you doing now? I said, I am a guest speaker at the Association of Muslim Scientists and Engineers. He said, what will you speak about? I'll, I said that my topic is reforming the ills and the diseases of the Muslim Ummah. And he said, okay, what? So I said, I am going to say that once we establish a Muslim government, a true Muslim government, the whole problems of the world will be solved. He said, how? I said, by teaching through Islam. He said, well, you know, governments don't make civilizations, don't make revivals, don't make progress. It is education, education, and education. Iqra, Iqra, and Iqra. And then we talked about it a few minutes. Then he really, that meeting was a, a determining point in my paradigm of reform. And I, I always cherish that few minutes with him uh, because it really changed my compass in life. The second episode, a few months later in December, 1969, uh, Dr. Jamal and I drove from Cincinnati, Ohio to Pennsylvania to, to the house of Abdul Hamid, invited by Dr. Ahmed Tuchinchi, also studying in Pennsylvania. And we drove through the snowstorms. It was very tough, but Alhamdulillah, we made it. And we, st we stayed with uh, Abdul Hamid in his house and his family for three days. And then at the end of the meeting, Jamal and I looked at ourselves. He said, we said, look here, you know, in England for four years, we studied there and we were going touring, touring Britain, uh, south, north, east, west, telling people Islam has the solution for everything in economics, just have no interest, just have sadaqa and zakah and all the problems are solved and so on. So we used to teach uh, our brothers and colleagues all the time. Then we said, now, now we found a man who can teach us. That is Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. The third important episode was in April, 1971, after the executive committee of the MSA in Jami Al Amin, Fi Gary, Indiana, uh, Jamal, myself, and Ahmed sat in my house at Purdue University in Lafayette, Indiana, looking at the present situation of the Ummah and the, uh, the community in, in America, and particularly the MSA of the United States and Canada. And we said, what, where do we go from here? What should we do? What are the emphasis? What are the objectives? Long-term, short-term, medium-term, all this thing. Then we said, we are all engineers. Let us call somebody who can, who is like a, a, a social scientist, a specialist with the experience and wisdom to, uh, to be with us and to discuss this issue for one week. So I called Abdul Hamid on a long distance call. At that time, it was expensive from uh, Lafayette to Pennsylvania. I told Abdul Hamid, please come. Uh, we are here, three of us. We want to discuss this issue with you. He said, look here, I come only, are you serious? I said, yeah, we are very serious. Otherwise, I didn't call you on long distance call, pay all this money. Uh, he said, "On one, I come on one condition. 
okay, what is it? He said, if we sit down and agree on a plan, are we willing to sacrifice our life, our uh, families, our careers, our whatever we are doing? Are we going to dedicate all this for any plan that we agree on? If we don't agree, everybody goes his way, no problem. But if we agree, are we commit? He said, oh, I said, of course, that's why we are calling you. And he came. Now, the major outcome of that meeting was that for the Muslim community and the MSA to exist and to flourish in the United States and Canada, we have four necessary and sufficient conditions. The first one is that we must have total, complete financial independence from any government or party. The second one is to have a presence in the media so that Muslims will speak about themselves rather than others will speak about Muslims. Then the third thing we said, because of the fast progress and achievements of this great organization of the MSA, we need to adopt and practice the state of the art of management and administration in, in America. Finally, he said, he added, and we have to have reform and renewal of Islamic thought because Quran is good for all time and places. And to be that, we, we have to put the, the factors of time and place in our interpretation and understanding of the Quran. My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you the secret. And that is, it is this meeting that was the seed to establish Association of Muslim Social Scientists and later on the triple IT. It was this reformation and renewal of the Islamic thought that Abdel Hamid uh, believed that without this, there will be no long future for uh, viable Islam to exist anywhere in the world. So we have to do this. And that was the kernel of the establishment of triple IT. Now, another story that I tell about Abdel Hamid, that is in April 1972, I was invited by the uh, West Coast Regional representative of the MSA in the conference there in Utah, Salt Lake City, to speak about secularism. So I said, I am only an electrical engineer. What is my practice? What is my uh, knowledge of secularism? All I know is some secularism, horrible secularism in Iraq and the Muslim countries, uh, which is uh, which is thought of and taught as practice as fighting religion instead of giving it independence. So I said, uh, very little knowledge. I have shallow of secularism in the West and particularly in America and England. So I said, I called Abdel Hamid again, long distance from Lafayette. I said, brother, I'm going to speak about this topic. Can you please tell, give me your ideas? He said, sure. Then we talked about five minutes. I listened to him. He said, I said, brother Abdel Hamid, I understand. He said, no, you do not understand. You have to listen and you have to write the notes so that, you know, you, then you understand. I said, yes, sir. And it took us one hour. I wrote all the notes. Then Alhamdulillah, I delivered all the ideas, just like Brother An was, was saying here, all the ideas of Abdel Hamid that I adopted, digested, and then could reproduce in a practical, uh, my own way. Now, I told you the seed of the triple IT was planted in Purdue University, 1971. But now we said, okay, we don't know how to do that reformation and renewal of Islamic thought. And if you don't know, stop and ask. That's what Quran says. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you know not. So in July, 1977, we called for a seminar. Uh, in Lugano, Switzerland, where we invited about 30 scholars from all the world to discuss and come up with this idea of triple IT, which was later on uh, in 1980, officially, it was established by Marhum Farouk and Dr. Jamal Barzinchi and Abdel Hamid Abu Sleiman in Philadelphia. They registered this uh, triple IT there. Another thing I will mention is that in 2017, uh, Brother Abdel Hamid was visiting Cairo. I think that was his last visit, Allahu Akbar. And he was discussing with all the scholars there and the brothers uh, of Triple IT in uh, Cairo, in Egypt. And uh, they were talking about uh, education, 
Islamic schools, uh, international Islamic schools that were the baby of uh, uh, Tawfiq al-Shawi and Mahmoud al-Shawi, his brother, Allah irhamu, and so on. See, so he came directly from Cairo to Jeddah and to Mecca, and then we had a meeting, myself, Dr. Ahmed Tutinji, Dr. Amr Kasuli, and Abdul Hamid, and a few others in the hotel. The first time he, he saw me, we sat down before even drinking coffee or tea. He said, Hisham, I brought you a challenge, uh, a heavy responsibility. I want to give you the key of education reform that the triple IT should focus and build its future on this call. Just like Brother Anwar, you, you just heard him, uh, the emphasis and the passion of Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman about education. And the, the way we, we understood education, that's how our book came out. Uh, it was three phases, the parenting from birth, then K to 12, the second phase, and the third phase is higher education. So that was really the major encounters with uh, Brother Abdul Hamid. Now, all of you know that we are a team, of course. We are a team of founders of seven people. Uh, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, Al Faruqi, Rahmanullah, and Taha Jabir, all of them passed away, Rahmatullah alayhim and Jamal. And now we have left Ahmed Tutinchi, Anwar Ibrahim, and Hisham Al Talib. The first three were actually the visionaries. They were the people who put the vision, they were the experts. And the last four were actually the people who practiced and managed the mission of those uh, people. Uh, brothers, I want to know, uh, do I have more time or because I was told only like 10, 11 minutes. Brothers, hello, hello. Hello, please okay. proceed. Yeah, please proceed. Okay. Then in this case, I'll just say about this team, uh, because most of you, uh, most of the world know Farouk very well through his publication and scholarship and so on. But, and they know Abdul Hamid, but to a less extent. But I want to tell you one thing. It was Abdul Hamid in the group who was the dynamo to push for these establishing institutions of uh, thought and philosophy and social science and human sciences. He was behind the establishment of the AMSS, Association of Muslim Social Scientists, and the Triple IT, and several other things. So he was the dynamo of all this. Uh, like Brother uh, Ahmed Tutinchi always says, one plus one, if you put one and one, you, you don't say two, you say 11. If you put one and one and one, you say 111 and so on. So if you put sub seven ones, just ima imagine, how all this product of the that we can see the achievement of Abdul and his dreams and with the with all the founders you can see the astronomical uh, resist, uh, uh, influence that they have on on themselves and on the world. I call Abdul Hamid Al Alim Al Hakim, knowledgeable but endowed with wisdom only. I will I will stop here when, with just two two incidents that tell you the effect and the impact of Abdul Hamid. One about Al Faruqi and one about myself personally. About my Al Faruqi, as you know, the highest level of scholarship of Al Faruqi all his life, he was really brought up in this total secular uh, education, uh, the, the best of it. And he told me that it was in the house of Abdul Hamid because he was the president of the local chapter of the MSA, Dr. Abdul Hamid, in the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, he, he used to invite the members of the organization and Farouki also. So Farouki told me personally that it is there in his house that, that I really tasted Islam. I really found practical Islam. Seeing a group of brothers, like 15, 20, okay, cooking, washing, eating, praying, sleeping on the floor, studying Quran and Hadith and all this, this. So that brought me the real taste of practical Islam. Finally, from my own wife, just to tell you how impactful Abdul Hamid was on, my, on me personally, uh, as a teacher and as a, a mentor and as a guide, you know, 
my wife Ilham talk, t- t- tells me that she is a medical doctor and she tells me things about medicine and habits and nutrition and so on. But then Abdul Hamid also tells me similar things. She tells me, Hisham, why is it when I tell you something in my own area, you don't follow? But when Abdul Hamid tells you something in the same area, which is not his specialty, you follow him. So that is just to summarize, that is the uh, impact of Abdul Hamid on Al Faruqi, myself, and many, as you all know, testify, and as you heard, the brilliant presentation of Brother Anwar Ibrahim. I have no more time. I already took more than uh, was allotted to me. But all we say is, Rahmatullahi alayhim shuhada. All of them, they passed away, and we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we meet them in the day of judgment in Al Firdaus al A'la. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu fi amanillah. I may have to leave soon because I have other engagement. Thank you for all those who invited me. May Allah bless you all and the family of Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Okay, Jazakallah Khair. Uh, we are grateful to you for bringing out multiple facets of the personality of Dr. Abdul Hamid. Uh, and uh, again, I would say I would have, I would have liked it to comment, uh, but we are uh, having a paucity of time. And I straightway go to breaking some protocol to uh, Mr. Siraj Hussain, uh, who was the former vice chancellor of Hamdarad University. Uh, he is keen to make uh, some comments and pay tribute to Dr. Abdul Hamid. Uh, so that's uh, he, is, he, is, uh, he has been the member of Indian bureaucracy uh, and one of the very good, uh, you know, administrators uh, with a sober mind, uh, but with a deep thought and uh, a vision. Uh, I straightway go to him because he has to leave. Uh, I invite him to kindly give your comments on the occasion. Uh, Mr. Siraj Hussain Saab. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, I'm thankful to you for inviting me to speak about this great uh, personality. Uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. I, frankly speaking, I do not know much about him because I have met him only once. Uh, and at that time, I was vice chancellor of Jamia Hamdard in New Delhi, which is a university set up by another great personality, Hakim Abdul Hamid Sahab of Hamdard fame. Hamdard uh, is a manufacturer of Yunani medicines in India. And also, his brother has set up a similar company in Pakistan. So I had read his book towards an Islamic theory of international relations. And when I was told that he's coming to India, I requested Dr. Manzoor Alam uh, if the university can consider uh, conferring an honorary doctorate upon him. So he agreed and I'm thankful to him for that. Now, uh, I will be very brief because I know there are so many other people waiting. Now, going through this book again today, I find that the context has not changed. And in fact, this book was written uh, immediately or around the time the Russians were going out of Afghanistan. Uh, In the meantime, last 20, 25 years, so much of water has flown over various rivers and the Thesis propagated by Dr. Abu Suleiman uh, is now questioned everywhere. And we in India uh, are also discussing almost every day what should be the role of a large minority in a country uh, like India, which has uh, secular traditions, which are, however, unfortunately, under great challenge now. So it is up to the other intellectuals who... uh, Follow, who have followed the writings of uh, Dr. Abu Suleiman to develop these theses about how the uh, Muslim minority as well as other minorities should live in a countries which are ruled by other. So there is a debate going on in India about the treatment of non-Muslim minorities in Afghanistan. Many of them had to be evacuated to India, Hindus and Sikhs. And therefore, whatever is written in theoretical terms in this book 
has to be implemented in practice so that uh, a model which we claim to be a global model of tolerance uh, can actually be shown to the world that look we treat everybody equally with honor justice and dignity so my homage to dr abu suleiman i uh, pray for much much higher place for him in jannatul firdaus thank you very much thank you siraj sir for your comments and we are grateful to you uh, and we had to place you because of this uh, you're being in haste uh, now i am going to uh, professor dr omar hasan k kasoli senior secretary general international institute of islamic thought usa uh, and uh, he has also been in medicine he studied in uganda uh and then uh, he got his uh, doctorate from uh, harvard university and he served in uh, different universities uh, i am not going to give a long introduction uh, because uh, it will be better to hear from him the best uh, on the personality which we lost uh, uh, physically uh and 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 then uh, uh, in 2005 Uh, uh dr kasoli has been on the faculty of uh, medicine of the university of brunei uh and then uh, the king fahad medical city in riyadh was fortunate in recruiting dr kasoli to its faculty of medicine in 2009 uh and i uh, know him more uh, uh, because of being uh, a very uh, uh, a person with clear thought Uh, about faith about uh, one zone person and then uh, being relaxed and uh, and uh, and and communicating the ideas uh, ideas the best so over to professor umar hasan kasoli senior uh, bismillah wa ala barakatillah was salat was salam ala rasulillah adda al amanah wa balagha ar risala wa nasha al ummah وجهد في سبيل الله حق جهاد جزاه الله عنا اوفر الجزاء سيستاز اند برادرز السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وي هاف لوست ان انتلكتو جاينت اند هي هاز ليفت بيهايند ا جريت انتلكتو ليجاسي اتس ا بيفيتينغ ليجاسي فور هيم اند اي ثينك ذيس ليجاسي ويل بينيفيت ذا امه فور ديكيدز تو كام عبد الحميد as a scholar and as an intellectual uh, had many relationships i will talk about what i know about him with regards to south asia because this uh, uh, program is in india and south asia i'll talk about it in two parts i will talk about it in his makkan upbringing and then later on when he was leader of international uh, organizations now in several conversations that i used to have with him He used to tell me about the contributions of South Asians to the Makan community where he was born and where he grew up. Uh, in his youth, immigrants to the city lived in different quarters and they were able to preserve some aspects of their original culture. But what he emphasized that all of them were immersing themselves in a common Makan international Islamic culture. Uh, the south asians uh, used to refer to themselves using the term hindi sindhi i regret i never asked him about the background of this terminology but my guess is that could be rendered as indo pakistan he told me about many achievements of this hard working community some as individuals some as families unfortunately i was not recording otherwise i would have a lot of uh, history Now as an intellectual he was interested in aspects of acculturation in the Makan melting pot of cultures the community while not forgetting their background they looked at themselves as full citizens of Makka and this was very surprising and he used to repeat this to me many many times that the south asians used to refer to themselves as hindi but then they used to say Hindi Sindhi Sadat Makkah 
It means in Sindi, we are the lords or the bosses of Mecca. See what happens. An immigrant comes to a city, feels so much that he's part of the city, and he can even say he's among the lords or the leading citizens of that city. It indicates a level of acculturation, adaptation, and acceptability that's available maybe only in, in Mecca. So he used, Abdul Hamid used to use this situation to illustrate the power of Islam to forge one community out of several ethnicities, making them all proud of the common Islamic identity. And he used to tell me that Mecca of those days was a model of the ideal integrated Muslim community that we look forward to, inshallah, in the future. So as we look for models of social integration at the local, national, and international levels, we need to look at the Makan experience that Dr. Abdul Hamid was describing. We need to study how it succeeded over the past 14 centuries to absorb wave upon wave of migrants who forgot their previous tribal national identities and became equal citizens uh, of Mecca. In fact, the Mecca that Dr. Abdul Hamid was talking to me about fulfilled the Quranic verse in Surah Al-Hajj, verse number 25, when Allah talking about Mecca, الَّذِي جَعَلْنَاهُ لِلنَّاسِ سَوَاءَ الْعَاكِفُ فِيهُ وَالْبَعْدِ He said that Mecca was made for people the same, the resident and the visitor have got equal rights and they are treated uh, equally. So Mac of those days fulfilled that. And to Dr. Abdul Hamid, that was a great lesson that the whole Ummah needs to learn to develop tolerance, acceptance of diversity so that we can become uh, stronger, inshallah. Now, the cosmopolitan upbringing of Dr. Abdul Hamid in Mecca prepared him for international leadership because he used to talk about uh, the house of Java, house of Kelantan, house of uh, uh, Nigeria. You know, there are many communities and he used to name all of them. He knew all the communities that were uh, in Mecca. So being brought up in a cosmopolitan environment prepared him to be uh, an international leader. And this started in 1972 when he became Secretary General of the World Assembly of Muslim Youth, WAMI and then later on became president of the International Institute of Islamic Thought, and finally rector of the International Islamic University of Malaysia. So there is a background to Abdul Hamid succeeding in all of these positions because of the cosmopolitan upbringing that uh, he had in, in Mecca. Now, in all of these positions, he interacted with Muslims from South Asia and non-Muslims. Uh, for example, he recruited many uh, faculty to join the university in Malaysia and admitted many in undergraduate and postgraduate uh, students. So he had a good interaction. Now I would like to end by discussing Dr. Abdul Hamid's special interest in India as a culture, as a history, and a, as a modern society. I think, because he never told me this, but I think I surmise that this interest arose out of his intellectual quest for a worldview. He was looking for a worldview to explain phenomena on earth and in the cosmos. And this is well illustrated in his great book, The Quranic Worldview, which has had a very big intellectual impact on Muslims and non-Muslims. So in his trying to understand a common worldview, he used to listen very carefully and pay attention to India. And I think uh, our teacher, both of us was Dr. Manzoor Alam. I would like actually to confer upon him an unofficial professorship in Indian affairs. Because whenever he came to Riyadh, he used to spend hours talking to Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaim about India from its distant history to its modern vibrant society. And I was always around listening. And he really educated a lot, us a lot. Uh, he talked to us about Premogul India, uh, Indian the Mughal period, Indian the colonial era. He talked about Indian reformers such as Waliullah Dahlawi, the Indian independence struggle and the role of Muslims uh, in it, post-independence India and the quest for equality and human rights under the Indian constitution. 
Dr. Abdul Hamid used to listen attentively without interruption. I think he was trying to absorb uh, India because it has got a diversity of religions, diversity of philosophies, diversity of ethnicities, classes, castes, historical experiences and contemporary experiences. And I think he used to listen very carefully, trying to see how this diversity fits in his world view. And I think uh, what he learned about India must have contributed a lot to what he wrote in his book about the world view. And I wish future scholars could uh, uh, do research to see the threads of thought that led him to write that book and what influences uh, uh, influenced him. And I think India is, uh, is one of them. So I would like to stop here and once again say, may Allah bless uh, uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid, wherever he is, because he has made a contribution. And it's a contribution that's uh, international. It's an intellectual legacy that will stay a uh, long time after him and will benefit the whole ummah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah, Professor Umar Hassan Kasuli. Uh, you gave us a very good brief about uh, the efforts uh, and, and, and uh, one point which can, should be marked and can be marked by the world that he was an incessant, uh, you know, uh, crusader of uh, knowledge, reformation, uh, and, uh, and he was a good learner as well as a good teacher. Uh, as, as a contributor uh, to the humanity. Uh, and we are grateful to you for uh, sharing your views with us. Uh, now I, I go to uh, Ahmad Alwani, Dr. Ahmad Alwani, Vice President of IIT, II, Triple IT USA. Uh, he, Dr. Ahmad Alwani, uh, he has earned his PhD uh, in 2014, in human resource development. Professor Abdulwani, sir, uh, Ahmed, uh, Dr. Ahmed Alwani has not joined yet. So let us move forward and okay. invite Dr. Habib Chazan. Now, uh, now I, uh, and then I pray to Allah that gives strength to Dr. Ayman as well as Dr. Mona, who lost their father, but he was uh, his, his, uh, Passing away was a loss to everybody. We are with you. Uh, have strength uh, and uh, you can contribute a lot uh, uh, in different ways. Uh, Allah bless you. Uh, now I'm going to Dr. Habib uh, Kirzin uh, from Indonesia. Uh, and uh, he is uh, also uh, a very dynamic uh, person. And he, he has been... Uh, uh, this, uh, as the secretary member of the international uh, study for the society uh, uh, in in Paris in in France and founding member of the board of trustees Southeast Asia Regional Institute, uh, he has been consult and country representative uh, the Netherlands Organization for International Development Cooperation. Hague, Netherlands, Chairman of the National Board of uh, Muhammadiyah Youth Movement, Jakarta. Uh, he has been Chairman of the International Relation and Cooperation of the National Board of Muhammadiyah, Jakarta. He has been Executive Director of the International Islamic Forum on Science and Technology and Human Resource Development, Jakarta. Uh, Commissioner uh, of the Indonesian National Commission on Human Rights, of the Republic of Indonesia. And uh, uh, he has been the Indonesian country representative of Triple IT uh, from 2008 up to now. Uh, he has, uh, he has uh, had uh, been in many positions. Uh, and uh, uh, we request uh, Dr. Habib uh, to kindly uh, give your contribution to this condolence meet and uh, uh, enrich us on the thought, personality, and vision of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Ahmed Al uh, Abu Sulaiman. Uh, over to Dr. Habib Kirzin 
Triple IT Indonesia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <laughs> Alhamdulillahilladzi domina sa'ada fi dunia wal akhirah. Adaha liman itaqawa amana wa amila salihat. Alladzi yuka fil mujahidin wal amilin al mujiddin al sabrihim wa sabatihim. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala hadha nabil karim. Wa rasul al-azim khatama nabiyin wa man tabi'a hudahu ila yamiddin amma ba'd. It's indeed a great honor and a great privilege to me to be with all of the great scholars, our mentors, our respected sisters and brothers in this uh, very special event of the Tazia online. And I would like to extend the sincerest condolence and tazia from our triple IT sisters and brothers in Indonesia, from the different universities, from the Muhammadiyah, from the council of the masjid campuses, and all of the triple IT participants in Indonesia. And allow me to present my humble tribute and condolence with the different approach and different uh, angle of the tribute to our mentor and our beloved um, Robbi Professor Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. When I have an honor to visit Dr. Abdul Hamid in 1994. I have with me about 30 scholars from Indonesia, some of the uh, uh, vice rectors and the deans from the different universities. And I was impressed by the highly academic and also with his uh, encyclopedic knowledge and also his concern and deep commitment to the reform, to Tajdid and Islah, the education reform, the academic reform, and civilizational reform. When I have an honor again to meet with the former president of Triple IT Indonesia, Professor Dam Raharjo, in 19, uh, 1996. We have an honor to have a dialogue for almost two hours. We really impressed with his uh, deepest commitment to the cause of Ummah. His view about the universality and the civility of Islam with his background as a Meccan. He was deeply impressed with the Islamic worldview, and he would like also to extend this worldview to Indonesian students, Indonesian scholars, and Indonesian universities. When I have an honor also to visit Dr. Abdul Hamid in Adams uh, Center in Washington DC, it was in 1997 after the annual uh, EPI United Nations sessions before the General Assembly sessions. I was invited to a dialogue with uh, Dr. Abdul Aziz Tuwajiri, the Secretary General of the ISESCO from OIC. He was very kind to be a moderator for our discussion between me and Dr. Abdul Aziz Waijiri. And suddenly we discuss about the sessions of the United Nations uh, before the General Assembly on the role of the United Nations in peace, justice, and development. And what impressed me from 
Dr. Abdul Hamid Suleiman that he made very immense uh, understanding of the peace issues or the justice issues and issues of sustainable development that make me more, what you call, impressed with the work of Triple IT. Actually, I was uh, introduced by, uh, to Triple IT by another giant, uh, Murabi, Allah Yarham, Professor Dr. Toha Jabir Alwani, because both of us, we used to be in the same, uh, what do you call, the International Advisory Board of the Global Education Associates based in New York. This Global Education Associate is uh, led by uh, Mrs. Uh, Gerald Mrs. and Professor uh, Patricia, Patricia Mrs. And I used to visit them in 47.5 Riverside Drive in, in New York. And only four of us from the Muslim society, Professor Dr. Uh, Taha Jabir Alwani and uh, Professor Abdul Aziz Said from American University and also uh, the brother uh, from uh, Binghamton University. And since then, I know better about Triple IT because uh, Professor Dr. Jab uh, Jabir, Toha Jabir Alwani represented uh, Triple IT. And then I, in the same year, I visited Triple IT in Herendon. Uh, after the international conference in Fordham University, in the Catholic University, against on the role of the United Nations in peacemaking, peace building, and uh, peacekeeping. I have an honor also to, to meet uh, Dr. Uh, Iqbal Yunus and Dr. Mirza, Jacob Mirza, uh, and also some brothers in Triple IT. So Triple IT is actually has a great impact. What I, I, I would like to say that uh, my approach here that uh, Professor Abdul Hamid has a great impact from his legendary works, from his books, but also from the way he established and developed the IIU internationalization and Islamization. It has a great impact to Muslim mind, to Indonesian scholars. So I, I would like to share with you here the impact of this uh, uh, legendary work of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman in Indonesian community, especially in the universities that since then, we developed the integration of knowledge and Islamization of knowledge and also internationalization. So the establishment of the International Islamic University of Indonesia, IIUI, I think was also uh, deeply impacted by the thought of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. And Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman was very kind to visit and to discuss with the rector and the deputy rectors of uh, International Islamic University in 2014 with his uh, son, brother Dr. Ayman Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. And after discussing on the reform, the need for Islamization, integration of, uh, of knowledge, and we talk about the establishment of this, uh, uh, the new campus in the, with the, the integrated view of campus and the curriculum reform and also in internationalization of the student and the lecturers. And then in the following week, we have a meeting also with the Vice President of the Republic Indonesia, with the Rector of the U U I I U I I U, and also with the Ministry of uh, Religious Affairs. So 
really Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman has a great impact to Indonesian university, to the integration of knowledge, to the reform and islah and tajdid, especially with the Muhammadiyah University in the textbook writing and also in the uh, what do you call the books uh, for, 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 for teaching materials. He was very patient in this regard. Yeah. I have an honor to, to accompany him uh, in IAU and the University, Muhammadiyah University and Indonesian University of uh, Jakarta that he was so patient. He is with a great uh, attention to develop this program on the uh, textbook and the teaching material, materials. He himself came and discussed with writers, alhamdulillah. And finally, I would like to share with you about his uh, sense of humor. He has a very high sense of humor. He always smile when he talk, when he uh, start his uh, uh, lecture, he always smile and make a, a joke. And in the end of his visit in 2015, after uh, what do you call the, the uh, checking in and he was about to board the, the plane and he taught me and my son uh, and you know, I will, I will not bother you again because I will not come again to Indonesia. And he talked to my son, Nafis. Nafis, you know, I will use your name as the nickname of Ayman, of my son. I will call Ayman with Nafis, with your name. That's uh, the high about the sense of humor of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, and I highly uh, respected him and I really learned a lot with the uh, great uh, ideas. What we need is to develop and further his uh, legion is uh, what you call, it is a great man. Alhamdulillah, Amin. And thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah Dr. Habib Kirzin. Uh, for your contribution to this uh, condolence meet, um, as uh, we are uh, now out of time, uh, I directly invite Dr. Zaid Barzanji uh, from USA. Uh, he is the executive director of Makasid Institute USA, and he has over 20 years experience in contributing to and leading nonprofits like educational institutions and community-based organizations. Uh, he sits on the boards of several non-profit organizations and is actively involved in community development projects. So prior to joining, uh, uh, he had 10 years uh, professional experience in the field of advanced analytics and was vice president of the risk modeling uh, at a top U.S. financial institution. Zaid obtained his PhD in economics from the University of Utah and is a frequent economic commentator at several media outlets. His current research interests are focused on developing a to economic issues like sustainable development. Uh, he's a believer of collaboration, compassion. Uh, I invite him to kindly give your comments on the occasion. Over to Dr. Zad Barzanji. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Dear honorable scholars, my uncles and elders, my teachers and lifelong brothers and friends of my father Jamal al Barzanji and my heroes. I'm truly humbled to be in your presence and have and to have the temerity to speak in such a forum. However, it is my deep love, respect and appreciation for who Al Allama Al Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman was for me. And 
the impact he had on my life that I have the boldness to speak in such honored company. The dear, late, beloved Alama, Ustaz, and uncle, and Mushtahid al Alama, Abdul Hamid Ahmed Abu Sulaiman, when the name comes, when his name comes to my mind, the following words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes flowing into my mind. يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ويرى الذين أوتوا العلم الذي أنزل إليك من ربك الحق ويهدي إلى صراط العزيز الحميد Those who were given knowledge of that which is revealed to you from your Lord Know that it is the حق Know that it is the truth And know that it leads to the path of the most mighty, the honored master, and the path of he who deserves all praise, Al-Hamid. So these words, I felt in my experience with my dear uncle and Alama, Abdul Hamid, Abu Sulaiman, represented his lifelong search and his commitment to seeking haq, the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the unfiltered haq that includes and guides to the path that ultimately leads to honoring our life and living an honorable life in this life, just like Al-Aziz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, and the path that leads to praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the gifts that he has given us in this life. So this was the path that I felt consumed uh, our dear uncle and Allama Abdul Hamid in his life. And it is this path that inspires me and inspires me to continue working on his legacy and the legacy of all his, the founders of the uh, International Institute of the Islamic Thought and to build on the legacy of the Islamization of knowledge and integration of knowledge and to say that the best way to honor these giants is to really uh, recognize how they have influenced who we are today and how they'll continue to influence our future. This is very prevalent in my current work at the Maqasid Institute when we'll always confront again and again the issue of the difference between al-aqli and naqli. And I remember the words of, you know, and the teachings of the dear Allama Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman that there is no such dichotomy. This is a created, this is an invented dichotomy. He who created the aql and is the same as he who revealed this knowledge to us. And there is only harmony between the two. And the dichotomy is really an invention that is, that just leads to confusion. And then we know that the way our dear Alama approached Al-Quran Kareem with such a strong and, and penetrating analytical mind that looked at the Quran Kareem as webs of meanings, as webs of concepts, and webs of sunan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to have this holistic view of what the Quran is actually trying to communicate to us, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually trying to speak to us these powerful, uh, this, this analysis reveals a much more powerful image of this universe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to approach this universe and all of Allah's creations as one unit. And we here as actors who are responsible not only for the well-being of Muslims or the well-being of humanity, rather we are not actually not the center of the Quran Kareem. Humans Islam is not a human-centric religion. It is actually Allah's creation and that is the center of the concern of the Quran Kareem. And it is when we are caring for Allah's creation altogether in a holistic manner that we all live in a, a happier or hayat tayyiba. We realize this hayat tayyiba. It is this approach of webs of meaning that currently I'm striving with all teams of researchers to implement in a systematic manner through the use of technology, through the use of 
extensive research through sifting through all the books that and all the amazing effort that was been put forth by generation of scholars to say this is what the ummah has thought about all the concepts of the Quran Kareem, all the qiyam and values of the Quran Kareem, all the maqasid of the Quran Kareem in every single walk of life, and then bring it all together in a massive, massive webs of meaning that contains millions of relations, because this is simply khalqullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and these are exactly the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will never end even if the oceans of the earth were poured. It is and the third point that is very critical when we deal with reform and islah is to remember the critique of our dear Alama Abdul Hamid Ahmad Abu Sulaiman when it comes to how do we deal with our beautiful and amazing and powerful tradition of uh, scholarship of wisdom over 1400 years is to recognize that this tradition is, cannot be discarded it is valuable, but it is part also of our history. These are our historical records, and it needs to be approached with wisdom so that, you know, we understand the context in which this tradition was revealed, or, or sorry, where this tradition was, you know, uh, came to happen and to be. It is this that opened the door for ishtihad, not only at the level of within the usul al-fiqh that exists today, but to say that, as with all analytical tools, usul al-fiqh is the product of human beings, and this usul al-fiqh and, 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 and the effort, the best efforts of our uh, previous amazing uh, scholars uh, to understand al-Quran al-Karim and the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And in this day and age, we probably can come up with another system of usuli system to that encompasses all that was done before but also looks at it uh, from a fully maqasidi uh, perspective and then let the maqasidi perspective drive the generation of a new usul fiqh uh, paradigm. So this is some of the impact of our dear uncle and Allama Sheikh uh, uh, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman at an intellectual level and in a, in, a, in a very quick summary. Personally, the dear Allama had uh, Many, many, uh, I mean, it, it, it's so hard to count the many incidents in which uh, Dir Allama Abdul Hamid would do something. And what he does will be imprinted in my mind and in my personality, in my conscious. And, and, and makes me think, oh, who is this man? How can, I mean, why is he doing this? And then sometimes at the moment I understand him, understand what he's doing. And sometimes it takes me really, it took me sometimes years to really appreciate the wisdom and the depth of wisdom. But I remember in one uh, situation, I was with, with him driving to the airport, uh, to uh, Kuala Lumpur airport. And we happened upon a big traffic jam. And those who are in, from Malaysia know that there's sometimes you can have some uh, strong, uh, some, some heavy uh, traffic jams. But the jam was happened because of one car that is standing, you know, just in a funny way. And what it takes, what it took, to clear the jam is that for three or four lanes of highways, uh, uh, lanes of cars on a highway to back up a little bit and then finally to gradually uh, go around uh, the obstacle right now. But so in the middle of Malaysia's hot noon, uh, our professor Alama Abdul Hamid Sulaiman gets out of his nice car and he starts and he proceeds to directing everybody, directing literally thousands of cars, if not hundreds or thousands of cars to back up and to finally enough, uh, make enough room for the jam to be cleared. And that when I, every time I remember that, like, why? Why would you do that? You are sitting comfortably in your car. Why would you get out? and do this, but it is like uh, a dear uh, brother and son of Abdul Hamid, uh, Abu Abdul Hamid is that said, you know, he, if he sees a problem, he thinks that, you know, why I wait? I should be there trying to solve that problem, big or small. But you see, the result of that action is that it comes out of not simply problem solving, but out of merciful heart. I mean, sometimes when we think of mercy, sometimes we are limited, but what he has done there 
is that he brought mercy to all these thousands of people who can, are stuck in traffic. They don't know how to get out of it. And they are all maybe complaining about the situation. But here is one person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in his heart to get out of, to get out and take action and solve a problem. And in the process, make that one day at least a little bit better off for all of this uh, ummah of humanity that are stuck on that highway on that day. So this is, has been a powerful lesson for me that if there's something that needs to be done, let's go ahead and do it. It might cost us, it might be inconvenient and it might be just really, and people might be bothered as who is this person who's directing the traffic and, and having the, the, the boldness to tell us what to do. Uh, but if it needs to be done, speak the truth and recognize the haq and follow the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, uh, the most owner of all praise and, and the owner of all might and dignity and honor. Again, I am really my condolences to the family of my dear Allama and uncle Abdul Hamid uh, and uh, the representative here, uh, my dear sister, uh, Sister Muna, and everybody who is my uh, aunt Fa'iqa and uh, the rest uh, of, of, the, of the siblings and, and, and your siblings and your children and the grandchildren of our dear Allama Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him the highest paradise uh, in Jannah and the company of his, uh, all those who were with him along his path and the company of all those uh, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands who were benefited from his knowledge. And inshallah, the many, many generations that will come that will build on his knowledge and benefited and benefit from his experience and life uh, examples. Yeah. Thank you again. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Zaid Barzinji. I think you were quite explicit. There is no need for further comments, but uh, I think this uh, a new approach to the study uh, with Makasid, uh, that also has been a contribution of uh, uh, the late uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Ahmed Abu Sulaiman. Uh, it's it's a, a kind of, uh, you know, uh, that facet of knowledge uh, which has remained unexplored, uh, I believe, for a long time. Uh, now uh, we have uh, uh, with us uh, Dr. Umar Hisham Al Talib from USA. He had left earlier, so I had invited uh, Dr. Zaid. Uh, and uh, avoiding a long introduction, I would say Dr. Omar Hisham Al Talib is a sociologist with his doctorate from University of Chicago, uh, and uh, uh, he has uh, many more feathers and has been a guide, consultant, uh, and many things. So I invite him to make his uh, contribution uh, uh, to to this condolence meet uh, and bring out. Uh, many more facets of the personality and vision of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Over to Umar Hisham Al Talib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I greet you from the city of Alpharetta in the state of Georgia in the United States of America. Please inform me if the voice is not clear because. My Your internet voice is connection. Quite clear. Your voice is quite clear, please. Good. So uh, I will not speak with temerity like my very good colleague, uh, Brother Zaid al Barzinji, who is a very good friend of mine, uh, and I love him more than he loves me. I will actually speak with uh, complete confidence, assurance, and uh, with uh, strength. Uh, and uh, what I would like to say is that one of the best decisions that Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman made in his entire life was to marry Sister Faiqa Malaika, who is one of the most wonderful women I have ever met in my wife in my life. And uh, together they raised the best children with the best methods, uh, and those methods are actually listed in a book called Parent-Child Relations published by the International Institute of Islamic Thought, and the author is Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman himself, and Dr. Hisham Al-Talib, and your humble servant, Omar Al-Talib. And the result of the great and wonderful upbringing uh, conducted by uh, my aunt Faiqa and uncle Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, Allah irhamu, 
uh, is uh, a number of children. I will mention uh, my good friend, Ayman Abu Suleiman, who taught me the value of reading. Uh, you see, in the past, I would read, but only uh, small books. Ayman showed me by example that uh, human beings can actually read very, very thick books and learn from them and enjoy them. Uh, and that is something he learned from his great father. And I also benefited in my life greatly from Sister Muna Abu Suleiman, who has been one of the most amazing examples of how a successful modern Islamic woman should be. Uh, there are few, very few such examples in the world today. Unfortunately, we need uh, millions and billions more. So uh, Sister Muna is a pathbreaker. She is a trend setter. She is a person who is courageous as well as completely dedicated to serving the Ummah. And I do not say this because she is my good friend. I say it because it is the truth. Uh, and uh, last but not least, I mentioned Brother Yasser Abu Suleiman, uh, the younger son of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman, who uh, set such a great example at George Mason University uh, in the Muslim Students Association. When I was the president of the Muslim Students Association at George Mason University, Brother Yasser provided support, encouragement, advice. But most of all, he was very honest with me. He would say, Brother Omar, this thing you are doing is correct. Please continue. This other thing you are doing is complete nonsense. Please stop it and stop it now. May Allah bless all the children of Brother Abdul Hamid and Sister Faiqa. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah, Dr. Umar Hisham, for apprising about the family of late Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, the way our children are to be brought up and other things. We are grateful to you for all that. And now I am going to uh, uh, Dr. Zaliha uh, Saliha uh, Binti Kamaruddin, former rector, IIUM Malaysia, uh, and uh, uh, request her to kindly uh, uh, speak on the occasion and uh, pay your tribute to the great personality. Uh, she is the judge of Sharia Court of Appeal uh, and uh, rector of IIUM and has many other uh, feathers uh, to be in her crown, I should say. Uh, but at the occasion, I think uh, we should request her to kindly uh, give your waivers on the occasion. Over to Dr. Saleha Binte Kamaruddin. Thank you, Prof. Abza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sallatu al-anbiya wa al-salim. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajfa'in. My greatest gratitude to the organizers, IOS and Dr. Manzur Alam, uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak in honor and remember Dr. Abu Sulaiman's life and share our grief at his passing. Um, I think for all of us who know him, uh, sorrow still fills our hearts. And this sad moment, a sorrow that is deep and personal. Dr. Abu Sulaiman has silently closed the door of his life a few weeks ago and departed from us. And um, it reminded me of what Albert Einstein said, the value of a man should be seen in what he gives and not in what he is able to receive. In one word, Dr. Abu Sulaiman was the man who gave he gave much to transform Islamic education, especially in the area of uh, Islamic thought. So I would like to speak in celebration of his life as the second rector of IUM. Here was a life that generates new knowledge 
a life that exemplified brilliance, a life that inspired emulation, a life that opens opportunities so that others' path will lead. So, um, if I may share stories about the, due to constraint of time, perhaps just one story. I have known Dr. Abu Sulaiman since 1989, when I was a young lady. And he was then appointed as the second rector of IUM. Uh, he wanted most of us to go overseas. And um, as a young person, I argued with him, you know, not knowing him. I argued and said that he has brought all these big scholars in RUM and he wants us to go away, you know, go away and get ourselves exposed. So they were arguments, but later on, as usual, he would win all those arguments by challenging me to go. He said it's not so much about knowledge, it's more on exposure. Yeah, I took up the challenge and I and I came back uh, in 1993 and uh, went to see him and told him that I <laughs> I came back uh, sadder but wiser. But uh, I told him that I really appreciate what he did by exposing me to the Western culture. Now, um, fast forward, as I've mentioned in our um, uh, um, program with uh, IUM, with all the rectors, uh, the third, fourth, and I'm the uh, fifth rector. I was the fifth rector. And uh, we, we shared the same feeling that he, he was a strategic thinker. He's not just a thinker, but also a doer innovative and creative. As such, he contributed much to the development of the real substance of the university. I realized that when I became the uh, fifth rector. Um, one day, uh, when I was in uh, Riyadh, uh, attending the Federation of Universities in the Islamic World, uh, Prof. Aziz Bagut, uh, who was the uh, deputy rector at that time, inquired whether I would be interested to visit uh, Prof. Abdul Hamid. I said, of course, I would love to see him. You know, first, uh, one, because um, um, I came back and served the student affairs division, and uh, we had a lot of programs in relation to uh, co-curriculum. And um, as I've mentioned that uh, I was more wiser then, so I did not argue with him. I just followed uh, his ideas, you know, but uh, um, uh, I could not understand unless uh, I read all his words. So this is a way of knowing him, his thoughts. And, um, um, and he left in a hurry uh, in 1999, um, you know, this famous, <laughs> famous incident where uh, he left in a hurry with his family. And then that was in the 20th century. I joked with him and I said, when I went to his house, sorry, not his house, his office in Riyadh, I, I told him, I said, Prof, this is 21st century. Uh, I'm, uh, I am the rector now. Uh, would you um, agree to come back and finish your job? He looked at me <laughs> and uh, I remember, it, um, I think I, I, I think that he must have thought that I'm crazy you know, for, for having him coming in for the second time. So we talked seriously on, um, uh, I've mentioned again, for him to tie up those things. And uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, we spoke seriously on things that uh, he wanted to do, you know. And, um, and, and I asked him, I said, um, Prof, I don't like surprises. I said, can you share with me, if you were to come in, what would you do? 
And he says, uh, sister, uh, this is what I want to do. So one, two, three, four, one, that's a lot. You know, and I told him, uh, Prof, one year is not enough. Come in. As long as I'm director, you try up all your loosenings. You may take a longer time. Uh, I'm not sure about my contract, but um, um, during my time, we will try to do uh, substantial things for the university. And I gave him the assurance that, that I will fully support what he wants to do. And uh, Alhamdulillah, the following year he came, that was 2011, 21st century. With all these new challenges, he came in. I could see the, the shine in, in his eyes that, um, like, uh, he has come back to do things that he loved most, which is the university. Because I know, I, I know when he 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 has not he never asked this from me. He said, uh, I remember he said, uh, sister Zaniha, I have built a house for the rector. He says, Are you staying in the house? I said, No, no, God. I'm staying in my own house, which is just five minutes away from the campus. Then he says, um, do you mind if I stay there for a while? He say he, but perhaps this is like uh, bringing in old memories, you know, at the same time, um, fulfilling, fulfilling um, unmet um, uh, things that he had not managed to do. And Alhamdulillah, we have Dr. Muna accompanying him, taking care of him, taking good care of him. Um, the fact that he wants to relive that experience, you know, so every time, I think every year when he comes to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, IIUM, he will go to Indonesia as well, arranged by uh, Prof. Ghani Ismail, and uh, all this accompanied by uh, Brother Zahran. So um, uh, I remember sitting in one of his uh, aspirations, which is to go through all the uh, course outlines eh? and making sure that there, uh, there are uh, integrations, integration of knowledge in all the course outlines. So uh, he said, I will start with the uh, Kaliya of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. And then I will move on from there. I said, please go ahead. And um, and uh, I have uh, delegated Prof. Aziz to make sure that he is comfortable as long as um, he is in RIUM. So I think he borrowed uh, Prof. Aziz's office, borrowed Prof. Aziz's uh, meeting rooms, uh, started to call all the lecturers one by one, go through their course outline suggest things that uh, the lecturers need to do. Um, from there, um, I understood uh, these are important things for him, things that need to be done. So you start from the substance, which is the course of one, integration of knowledge. The, the, the Western ideas and the uh, and, and the Islamic knowledge, put it together. So he went on and on and on for a few days. Uh, he needs um, a few days. Your voice is not clear. Please, oh, please okay. speak a little louder. Yeah. Okay, I will speak yes. louder. Yes, yes, now, now it's fine. Yeah. So um, um, uh, it was Prof Jamil who would schedule. Uh, him to go to Indonesia. I think he had some other commitments in Indonesia, but uh, I, rem I remember he came uh, almost every year from 2012 uh, onwards, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, 16 was the last year he came. And, uh, and uh, I remember um, Prof. Sanu told me that uh, he told Prof. Sanu, so this is like hearsay, but uh, I trusted Prof. Sanu. Prof. Sanu said he told Prof. Sanu maybe 2016 would be his last year because uh, after that he had some uh, uh, 
uh, physical ailments that he could not travel. But uh, Alhamdulillah, I would say this would be my um, uh, last um, say on uh, on uh, Prof. I used to call him Prof. That um, he told me that he was happy that I gave him the opportunity at least for the next five years after he left in the 20th century to tie up the loose ends. He was happy because these are the things that he wanted to do, but he couldn't do when he left in a hurry. He was happy, um, although that there were the things um, uh, which he couldn't do and uh, and, 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 and he couldn't see that he could uh, do anymore. Uh, although physically, uh, I think he is not capable of at that age. But he showed me around, you know, including the secret tunnel and, and, and other things as well that uh, I had not known. But uh, I would end that uh, by saying that Dr. Abu Sulaiman was deeply concerned with improving and transforming education. That I could see the spirit in him, uh, like the English uh, sayings. Huh? Um, uh, the spirit is willing, or the physical is weak, but the spirit is willing. So this is. Dr. Abu Sulaiman. He was very keen to innovate. And to him, I could see he is not interested in business as usual. Right? Um, I would sit by him whenever he comes. It's like a, um, I would say a tutor, one to one session. So he would advise me as a perfect gentleman. Um, advising me uh, to initiate projects despite all the challenges and encourage me to take risks. Um, if not for time constraint, I will share uh, some of the things which I learned in the previous session. I mentioned that he taught me to listen with my eyes, to take risks, to be kind to students and inshallah in a session perhaps one day one day uh, all of us will sit together and write on his um, contribution um, to knowledge but what i know he initiated he implemented much in this field during not just the 10 years that he was at IEM, he added that with another five years. And I made my promise uh, to him that after he finished the course outline sessions with all the lecturers, the lecturers were supposed to write a textbook based on the course outline of which they did. And uh, I have hand over um, all the textbook projects to Prof. Omar Kasule when he came to visit the university. Um, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I know his passion never dies. He may have gone, but his passion never dies. Because when I visited him in Riyadh, I could see he still loves the university. He never left. He was still into it. And uh, if not for his um, failing health, uh, he would still be continuing doing this. And IUM is the platform for him. With that, thank you very much, Prof. Amzal, for giving me this opportunity. And we hope to collaborate with IOS on um, uh, more ventures uh, around his talks. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Thank you, Jazakallah, Professor Dr. Salia Binti Kamaruddin, uh, for being very, uh, you know, uh, real about projection of the personality, thought, and vision of uh, uh, Dr. Abu uh, Suleiman. Uh, and uh, it, it was quite exploring. And uh, uh, now I request uh, one of the well known scholars, Dr. Fathi Malkavi uh, from IT Jordan, uh, that kindly uh, make your brief comments. Uh, on the occasion. Uh, over to Dr. Fathi Malkavi. Bismillah. Uh, would you uh, give me the video, please? I cannot do it. Okay. Is it possible? No, we, uh, we can hear Is it you. possible to, to do the video? No, I, I don't know. I'll have to talk to the uh, this technical staff about it. Okay. Okay, I, I'll start talking. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa atba'ihi wa ba'd. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, this memorial meeting is obvious an international meeting. It comes after several other meetings in Malaysia and the U.S., uh, in Egypt, uh, next week in, uh, in Jordan, uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, some other uh, meetings will come on. Uh, each one of us uh, remember some of his or her memories with Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. I would always prefer to relate Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman to his other friends who were together as a team able to do a lot of impact on Islamic resurgence and support this resurgence with academic, practical, institutional thought and scholarship. The mercy of Allah on the soul of Al Faruqi, Barzanji, Alwani, and Abu Sulaiman. We pray for the remaining uh, of the group who would be able to keep and develop the legacy of Abdul Hamid and Dadar, who, who passed away in order to actualize uh, the noble vision and mission of Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Uh, those brothers uh, usually consider Abdul Hamid as the star among them. I met Dr. Abdul Hamid for the first time in 1979 at the annual meeting of the Association of Muslim Social Scientists in America. Uh, uh, I visited his home in Riyadh for the first time in 1980. Then I have had many other visits. I joined the International Islamic Thought in 1987 when he was the chairman of the Institute's, Institute's Board of Trustees. Uh, I kept in touch with him ever since as an academic advisor and as an executive director of Triple IT. Uh, but the most important uh, uh, memories of mine with Abdul Hamid was that I accompanied him with uh, uh, on, on many uh, visits to Malaysia, Indonesia, in, uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Turkey, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, South Africa, Britain, uh, Egypt, Kuwait, and sometimes I, I am alone with him. In travels, as you know, you know the manners of men, and I know who was Abdul Hamid Abu, Abu Suleiman much more than what I know about his reading and his personality. Uh, I uh, read uh, uh, almost all his uh, writings, and he read mine. Uh, while he reads a lot and benefits from what he reads, however, he remains an independent and unique personality in the structure and way of thinking and writing. You will agree with him most of the time, and you may differ with him in some details sometimes, but you cannot help but to respect him and to listen to him very carefully in order to realize his frame of reference in establishing his opinion and position, and then to realize his far-reaching goals. He has had a noble vision and mission of a comprehensive Islamic reform project uh, through the reform of uh, thought and education. All his writings and lectures are uh, dedicated 
to the realization of uh, to the re realization of this mission with a critical analysis of realities and visionary perspectives. When you first meet him, you feel and think of him uh, as of high class, his prestige. Then you discover his extreme humility and his present intuition, uh, which is accompanied usually by sense of humor and gives a feeling of pleasant uh, comfort. He believes in the integration of efforts with a global horizon through teamwork and participation in making an opinion or uh, a decision. With this methodology, he and his group uh, contributed to the establishment of many institutions in many countries, countries over a, a period of more than half a century. We pray that Allah Almighty grants him mercy, forgiveness, and high rank in Al Jannah. Our deepest condolences go to his family, students, friends around the world, and his fellow uh, fellows uh, at Triple IT. May Allah Almighty give us all sabr jameel and azaa hasan. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, 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 Dr. Fatih Malkavi. Uh, you made a concise but very meaningful contribution to this condolence meet. Uh, and now I am moving to Professor Dr. Kutub Mustafa uh, Sanu. He is the Secretary General of International Islamic Fiqh Academy. Uh, and uh, uh, he has made many contributions, but uh, because of the paucity of time, uh, uh, I may skip at the moment a reference to all that, uh, but uh, uh, I invite you uh, to kindly make your uh, presentation uh, about the life vision. And as uh, you have uh, known, uh, uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Ahmad Abu Suleiman uh, and enrich our understanding of that great personality, that legend who has just left us a few days back. So over to Professor Dr. Kutub Mustafa San. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslim al-kathira. Brothers and sisters, uh, beloved uh, leaders and teachers, friends, uh, uh, our mom, uh, Madam Faiqa, my brothers and sisters, the son and daughters of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, let me start by thanking you for organizing such a gathering, uh, talking about a man that we will not be, we will not finish talking about him. Even if we have to take a days, a month, uh, maybe years, because he has left behind him a great and a big and lasting legacy. You may allow me to go back uh, something around 30 years ago when I just graduated, I finished my master's in Riyadh. And I was with uh, our father, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a quick recovery, Dr. Ahmad Tutunji in his office. He told me there is a man who wants to meet you. And I came in the evening, there was somewhere in 1993, was nobody else was this is Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. I have heard about him, but I never met him very young those days. I just finished the masters. And he told me that uh, you have to join us in, in, in Malaysia. I, I told him that I am having an offer from the Georgetown University. I'm going to do my PhD over there. He said, you don't go anywhere. You will have to go to that place. I want you to come to teach. At the same time, I told him I'm not that much interested in teaching these days. I want just to finish my PhD before starting. He said, okay, the same time you do your PhD, you have to come. Even though I have made a, a, a policy law that all the lecturers of IUM, they have to have their PhD before starting teaching. But I want you to come. 
uh, I do tell him that, I tell him that, they, when do you want to? He said, you wanted yesterday. So you have to go right now. So what should I do? I have to go back uh, to my family and try to find out. We have made some arrangement. May uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our father, Dr. Ahmed Tujinji. He told me, just listen to the wise man. He has given you something you will never regret it in your life. Everything started from that day. Then I joined, I came to IAUM. I had the privilege to meet in him every single day. He gave me the chance to come to the office after five or six o'clock when everybody's gone to the how to the places. When I came to him, he, knowing that my background was coming from the traditional school, I did the study in the Haram from the Haram to, to the uh, Islamic uh, jurisprudence, the Sur al Fatah, and did things. He liked to challenge this knowledge, this tradition, the background. He will start by saying uh, something to me from somebody who had a kind of little bit of education from this place is a very strange one. He was saying, I don't think this is what the people have been telling you about this issue. It's not the one that should be. First of all, he told me, why are you people who keep teaching the children the surat, the al qisar do you think the children could understand this surah, the meaning of this surah at that age? Do you think it was the right thing to start teaching the kids with this one? You are inserting in their heart the fear. And then these surahs were revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Prophet was talking to the elders to the adult people who have, have the possibility to understand what does it mean, al qari'a al qari'a, what does it mean, either. I told him, what, what do you would like to also do then? He said, go and teach them the love, teach them the compassion, teach them the kindness, teach them something. The child should grow and will have to grow with this. They shouldn't be growing with talking about the day of judgment. The child will never, ever be able to get this thing to know uh, at that age. They will need years to come in order for them to get exactly what do you want them to teach. And I went back to check myself. And I, knowing that the Quran was not revealed, uh, it's been written to us. I mean, it was separately. The surah was, uh, the first surah was Surah Al-Iqra, but it's not the one we do have in the Mus'haf. Then the last was some of the surahs which are in Medina. is not the one which is Surah Al-Nas, which are uh, the surahs that are all revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was Makkah. Then he will come again and challenge me. And I will tell him that uh, I do want you to tell me there is no contradiction between the Nakil and Aqil. There are people who are saying Ta'ar of the Nakil and Nakil. This is just nonsense things. And then with the languages sometimes become very provocative. I would listen to him, but he challenged me and I have to go to the, to the library and try to check. Before going to Malaysia, I read his book, which is the main book today, we need to be uh, read and need to be uh, distributed. All over the places has been done to be translated, which is the Azmat al Muslim. He told me in that book, and he, he is the summary of what he has gone through knowing what the crisis of the Muslim uh, like, though, where the crisis is coming from. And that book, he was really relating so many things and he's summarizing it in a way you may need years and years to get exactly uh, some of the things which are learned this thing. There. What I would say here, brothers and sisters, this man was a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a blessed man. It's not done for everybody and not everybody is having the chance to be a thinker and had a chance, you're taught to be taught in the university, to be seen in reality. Many people have good ideas, but that ideas may die in their minds, may die in the books, but having the chance to do all these ideas to be seen there. Where this idea was really put in play, put in, in practices, it is IUM, International Islamic University. Here, we have to be grateful and thankful to the Malaysia, to Malaysian, Malaysian people, Malaysian government, to especially to our beloved brother, Natusri Anwar Ibrahim, who made it for him, made it possible for Dr. Abdul Hamid, that all ideas, he's been talking about it years, and that thing to be uh, in practice into this university.
he transformed the universities. I reached the university in those days in 93. Of course, Prof. Dr. Zaliha, knowing that they know that before how this university was and when he came in and what had changed, he had impacted this university. He had promoted Malaysia. He had made Malaysia a center for excellence for education. He made it that it was possible. You have a Harvard in the state in the United States of America. You have Oxford over there in the UK, but you could have something which is not less than these international universities. It is an international Islamic university. He started for these integrations of Islamization and comprehensive excellence. And with the help of Prof Kamal and all of those outstanding learned from all over the world, they were coming together to put these ideas into practices. It was not meant to, it was not done for everybody. Dr. Dr. Abdul Hamid, one of the day I came to him to tell him in the office, I think, Prof, you know, you are saying very, don't you think it's so difficult for you? How will you go back with the ages coming and everything? He said, no, don't you worry about this. Omar has been, it's been left behind for years. So we have to do what we could do. And the rest of our life, I have dedicated it to save the Ummah, and I will do. And then he brought all international students that you have seen it. More than thousands of the international students who graduated. They all graduated by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the vision of this uh, great man, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. He taught us that you should not be worried about the ideas. When the idea is strong, it will get its way. Maybe sometime it's not exactly in your lifetime, but it will come. The time will come, people will go back to you. And the time you come, he's been talking about the violence and the people not go to the violence at all. Violence should not be used as a means, even for educating the children. And you know, well, the theory was talking about hitting the women and all the things. He's been having these things in mind to say, I have to challenge all of these legacy, all the traditions that have been saying that the Quran did allow this thing to happen. I do not believe in it. And I do not want you to mix up with what the texts and the interpretations. That was sometimes it might be it's sometimes it's misunderstood by the people uh, saying why he is making some critical analysis and some critics to some of these ideas. People might be saying that he is saying this one. He was having in mind that very, very optimistic way of thinking, looking at the life. He said this is going to happen and this is to happen. In 1998, when he decided to leave, I was with him in the airport. I said, Prof, you know, you, you're the one who brought me here. And as I could see the situation here, I really once, I also decided I have to resign, I want to go. He said, you resigned to go where? I brought you for this day. I want you to be stay here. I brought you and I was meeting you every day, every evening in my office. I want you to be here and you should continue to bring what about this is triple IT's ideas or what has been the things have been. Do you think I was talking to you all of these days for nothing? I was seeing these things coming. And I, you, you have to do your best and do try to do what you could do to maintain. It was only after 10 years, he had a chance to come back to higher UM. After establishing he and I, we, was walking, we were walking around in the campus while the campus under constructions. He was saying, this is going to be the office of the new rector. This is going to be the Senate hall. This is going to be a banquet hall. This is going to be here. And I want this university should be modeled for all, and not only for the Muslim world, but should be for the rest of the world. And he was saying, I was seeing, staying in that office. He was saying, this is going to be great things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made it that it became exactly the great an institution of higher learning. We are proud of these things. The children and, uh, should, and the grandchildren, they shouldn't be so sad for this man. He lived for the Ummah and he dedicated all his life for the Ummah. He did everything for the Muslim children all over the world. He brought the student from places he never expected them, the student to come. And then he was given the money. I do remember that one. The salary that he was having, now was never touching this salary. Brother Zailan told him at the airport what to do. We have more than half million ringgits in his account under the salary. He said, put it, and then we'll start our international endowment fund. This international endowment fund was established. The first amount of the money which was contributed to this one was the salary which was accumulated in the financial finance division in IUM. 
I could see in this that uh, the, our mother, Mr. Faika, has been there for him when he is coming tired and the next day will be coming smiling. He wants to see the international student, visiting some of them in the hostel, getting them, getting to know what is happening and what is going on here and there. So what we will have to see today, we have this debt to this man that we have to spread the eight years. We have debt to all of these great people, great thinkers in triple IITs. I would just remember here all of the late who have already passed away and then we have great disrecognition and thankfulness and gratitude to Malaysia for having him and giving him such kind of free, such kind of space, peaceful one, lovely one, and we keep helping him to be and put these things inside. I have to record here the thankfulness of Dr. Abdul Hamid to Dr. Sri Said Arabi. When he left the university in 98, he, every year we met, when I came to Saudi Arabia, he was so much keen to know what is happening. It was only that Dr. Abdel Habib, Dr. Sri Said Arabi, who went to see the prime minister then, who did allow him to come back. Dr. Abdel Hamid, we met him in the house and we told him, you have to come back to see because the, the Gombak campus was not, was not, didn't finish when he was there. And then he brought the IUM comfort upon him, the honorary doctorate with the Tansley San Jose Junaid, Peace be upon him. He was a great, he was happy. This was the thing, the happiest days in his lifetime. Seeing what he has planned and what he has contributed to see it in, into reality. And our thanks and grateful to his dear to Professor Dr. Zaliha, who later on also made it that every year he had a chance to come to see these universities and give him this uh, emeritus title. It was not the title he was so much interested, but coming to Malaysia, seeing their things, looking at the place and here. One of the day when he was in, in 2009, 2008, he wanted to walk around during the night time who brought him to walk. This is the campus. Even he was, was no longer rector. He was saying, I would wish that there is no, no, no vehicle should be uh, inside the campus, should be a walking area and the people would have to go and visit this one. Brothers and sisters, I do not want to take uh, all of your time for this one. We are inducted to this man. Myself, my family, my fellow brothers and sisters, we are all adapted to him. We are adapted because we are what we are today, because of the grace of Allah and him, he is the one who gave us the opportunity to get the education, to get the experiences, to learn how to run offices, to learn how to be a good man, to learn how to believe that Umm has a feature and that feature will come no matter what will happen and what will be seen before all you all say. Our gratefulness to go to all and our, our greatness and gratefulness and thankfulness to, to our mom, to Sister Muna, you have been a great daughter for your father. Your brothers and sisters, they have been doing the same thing, but you have the responsibility. You will have to make sure that what she left should continue to rise should continue to be all over the place. You and I and all of us, all of the students of this great man, all of the beloved of this great man, we have this debt and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us about it. The last things I have to say in 2016, our last meeting, he was on the wheelchair. I was pushing him. I told him that, uh, and I have to go. I said, no, you're a minister. How could we minister? can push my, my wheelchair. I don't want it to do. I say, I'm not minister to you. I'm a just a servant. I'm a just humble son to you. If I'm minister today, it's because of you. You made me minister. It's not the government or whoever else did it. Because you, you taught me how to behave and how to become where, what, where I am today. So he told me that one. I'm very pleased to Dr. Zaliha. She maintained what we wanted and this university is growing and it will continue to grow. I'm telling you, this is going to be my last trip to Malaysia. I told him, don't say this to prof. I say, I'm telling you, I will not be able to come here anymore to this place. I told him, you will come. I will keep coming and this there. I say, I'm just saying that one. Okay, forget about it. When I'm going to write my, 
my biography. I will say to the people one day, a minister was pushing my wheelchair. I said, no, you just say a son that he, you educated him. You help him, you, you gave him all of the opportunities. I was not only the only international staff, international student, international student that place that you provided me. I will finish this one by saying, as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, <laughs> اتخذ الناس رؤوسا جهالا فسئلوا فأفتوا بغير علم فظلوا وعظلوا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم God is not snatching the knowledge from us as we might be thinking he wants to snatch it that the way he did but he is snatching the knowledge he is snatching the knowledge by the departure by the demise, the death of the great scholars the scholars over here, not only the religious scholars, great thinkers, people who had, have impacted. You have Prof. Ali Albani, Dr. Jabir Al Alwani, Dr. Jamal Barzanji, Dr. Ismail Farouki, and then you have all of those great people who impacted their time and contributed. And then today we are having the founder and the person, the real thinker, the big one. The the, 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 real, the the greatest one with Dr. Abdul Hamid. We are today inducted and I will have to work harder to pray for the rest of, for the peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted him and granted him the paradise. Muslim children, Muslim Umar has lost a great man, but never, never lost his thoughts and the thoughts will, will, will stay and it will have to stay. And then we'll have to do what we could do to make sure that this that the post will last forever. Thank you to you all, for all of you. Thank you to Malaysia. Thank you to Indonesia. We love Indonesia so much. And thank you to Jordan, to all of these places, to Saudi Arabia, where he was born and where he was always was lasting, just talking about Mecca, and the people of Mecca and how he loved this, this land. So thank you very much, Sister Muna, and your brothers and sisters for helping him to be buried in Makkah. This is a great chance and it's a great sign. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him and accept him. Our condolences to you, our mom, Faika, my children, my wife, sending to you your condolences. You were to us, a mother. You accepted us. You invited us so many times in the house. We're not think that day, those days, we're just a simple human being, but you provided us with the kindness, with the love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless your daughters and your, 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 your sons and all your grandsons. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give cocky recovery to our beloved father, Dr. Ahmed Chutunji, Dr. Hisham, Dr. Omar Kaswili, Prof. Fatih Melkawi, and others, and to you, uh, Dr. Mangur Alam, thank you for being so kind. Thank you for keeping these things. We are grateful. May Allah forgive all of us and bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Kutub Mustafa Sanu, uh, for being very sincere to your teacher and mentor. Uh, and uh, you made it clear that uh, he could bring out the best out of a human being. Uh, he could be, he could build personalities, institutions, uh, and uh, I can say he could shape the future of the humanity. Uh, I wish that all his students, uh, they keep on striving on the same path and uh, keep guiding people and taking them uh, to future. Uh, in a better way and make the world a better place to live. Uh, God, Allah bless you. Uh, now in the list, I have myself, so I skip it for the moment. We have uh, uh, one of the very senior uh, scholars and professors from India, uh, Professor Zad M. Khan with us. He is the Secretary General of the Institute of Objective Studies. Uh, and, uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu uh, Suleiman, he had a lot of concern about the development 
uh, of uh, academics uh, and research here in this part of the world uh, for the benefit of humanity. I request Professor Zadam Khan, uh, please uh, uh, make your comments on this occasion and this condolence meet, meet, which is being organized by Institute of Objective Studies with scholars across the globe uh, in honor of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid. Uh, Abu Suleiman. Uh, over to you, Dr. Professor Zad. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. <clears throat> and you are visible also. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Na'amadu nusalli ala rasulahi al-Kareem. You know, a lot of things have been said about the great personality of Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. One can debate about his personality, his thought, his action, his action plan, and his future projections for years together. But I think he's more relevant to us after his demise than he was during his lifetime because he have left a message, a mission to be completed. And whosoever is impressed by his ideas and thoughts are liable to carry forward his message and his mission and to humanize the whole humanity. He was struggling for creating a humane society based on the Quranic principles and the life of Rasul Akram Salaam. I have the privilege to act as a host to him several times. And once he played a host to me when I visited <clears throat> Triple IT. I requested him for a special session for one-to-one -one discussion in his office. <clears throat> he gave me time, I reached. He said, what would you like to take? I think you should have coffee. I told him, yes, I agree. He himself left his chair, came to the sofa, started preparing coffee, I tried my level best to help him out. He said, no, I'm not allowed to allow you to have got this privilege because this is my privilege. At that time, I asked a question to that great man that you people claim that Islam has given a high place to, to women in all areas and Islam has made women a legal person, an economic person, a political person and so on. But why it is so that man is allowed to beat lightly a woman? He put forward an argument, this is a wrong interpretation. He said, that Quran gives you the theory and Rasul Akram Salaam's life gives you the practical. If this could have been true, then he must have practiced this also in his lifetime. And we don't have any record of any incident even nearer to that situation. Then he said that he had examined the grammatical depth of this statement and of this source and he said that we have wrongly interpreted it the right way to interpret is that if someone is angry then he can have a temporary separation and that is the maximum punishment the husband can aspire for and that is why if 
Islam is to be understood, it has to be understood with a combination of theory and practice, both. I have got a lot of things to say about him. We can go on debating these things for months together. I have read his book, Crisis in Muslim Mind. And from my point of view, I have, I have, I have actually devoted my whole life in reading books. But if I say that it is one of the four best books I have ever read, written by an individual, then it is one of those. Crisis in Muslim Mind is a marvelous, thought-provoking book, and that requires to be worked out in coming years by all of us who are concerned with Islamic message and who are concerned with the personality of Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. I pray in the end for his good placement in Jannah and may God give him a very good place in Jannah and allow him to enjoy all peace all around and Almighty be happy with him. I'm sure he will be happy with him and all of us must pray for it. Thank you very much for this opportunity to me that you have given me the chance to express a few sentences about him. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Zadam Khan. Allah bless you. Uh, you uh, gave a very important message uh, that uh, uh, how Quran is to be understood, how faith is to be understood, uh, and how meaningfully we should uh, uh, look to things, uh, I think that's uh, very important. Uh, and uh, you prayed for uh, his best place in, in the paradise. Uh, I shall also add to that prayer one thing, uh, that God make people understand the mind and faith and understanding of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Make his vision clear to the people for whom he endeavored throughout his life he was restless throughout his life, uh, uh, preparing people, students, and institutions for that purpose. Uh, may that mission go, may that legacy survive. Amin. Uh, now we have with us uh, another uh, uh, great scholar from uh, India, uh, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Hasina Hashia. She's a geographer. Uh, and she is uh, Assistant Secretary General with the Institute of Objective Studies uh, and uh, knows many things about uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid uh, Ahmed Abu Sulaiman and is very enthusiastic about uh, all uh, what he was uh, communicating, transmitting to generations. And now I invite Professor uh, Hashia, please, uh, uh, give your comments on this occasion of uh, this condolence meet in memory of Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. Uh, Professor Hashia. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to all. Assalam. I knew late Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman through Institute of Objective Studies, New Delhi. He visited India and also IAS several times. And during his first visit, uh, no, it was not first visit. I think it was his second visit in 2001. Uh, Mrs. Abu Suleiman was also with him. Uh, I met her. They were staying in the uh, Surya Sofitel Hotel nearby Jami Mile Islamia and Institute of Objective Studies. I met her and along with uh, other ladies, three, four ladies from Institute of Objective Studies, I uh, accompanied her to visit the historical places in Delhi. We were together for the whole day and on the same day in the evening, I met Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman Sab 
and he talked to me uh, this was my first interaction with him i found him after talking with him he ta- he asked me about my university about the educational system in india about uh, the activities of the ias then i found him a humble human being a great educator and a reformer i had enough knowledge about the alama iqbal uh, the great poet of the east uh, i wa- i i i found his ideas very close to dr alama iqbal the great poet of the eastern world then i wanted to know more about him it was the period when we were not having the internet we were not having the google searches and extra because uh, these uh, um, technological uh, advancements were not available at that time then i consulted the library of institute of objective studies and i found some material there uh, i uh, uh, read that material after some time we met the chairman of institute of objective objective studies dr mohammad manzur alam he gave us a set of certain books of uh, the uh, professor abdul hamid abu suleiman sahab and i uh, uh, read those books uh, these I, i think it was a set of seven or eight books and there was one book crisis in muslim mind after reading these books i came to know a very broader meaning of education what the education is it is not only the learning the facts but it is the uh, it is the training of minds it is the training of minds to think what is the meaning of our existence why we have come to this world so i wa- i try to know more and more about him i found him an open minded scholar great scholar educator and in every every book there was a message there is a message there is a awakening call for muslim ummah and after that i came to know his concept of islamization of knowledge so he i will say true he was truly and he was truly the father of islamization of knowledge movement uh then in september 2016 there was a global muslim women summit in iaea malaysia under the rectorship of professor zaliha kamruddin and convenership of professor kamar onaya i got the chance to attend this great summit on this occasion professor abdul hamid abu suleiman sahab was fascinated he was felicitated by iaum for his great contribution to the iaum his daughter mona abu suleiman was also felicitated felicitated for her contribution i think in the field of journalism during this occasion i got time to meet and interact with this great man he inquired me about the ias it is working he told me uh, he asked me uh, how is ias going on and he also told me about his association with the chairman ias uh, dr mohammad manzur alam sir after that i found on the whole i found him a man of many dimensions a visionary a philanthropist a great thinker a thought leader a institution builder because he has established in many institutions he was instrumental in establishing uh, in stru- uh, these institutions in usa in saudi arabia in Mal- and the great iaum in malaysia so he was a, i found him a, in an institution in within his within his being within him due to his critical thinking and uh, progressive outlook he was able to make iaum as one of the best educational institutions of the world and due to his deep understanding of the need for muslims 
to develop a new way of thinking he took the challenge to make iim as an agent of change according to him education and proper upbringing of the uh, new generations of muslims must be the first concern to change the mind and break the psychological changes the psychological chains that have bound muslim umma for several centuries with the demise of this great man muslim world has lost a great thinker a reformer a thought leader and a wonderful person with great mission who tried to reform muslim minds i request in a short of objective studies to continue his legacy to continue the legacy of this great man and his movement of islamization of knowledge should be brought forward uh, and it must be kept uh, alive in all levels i also request the organizers of uh, this uh, institute of office uh, 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 main office bearers of institute of objective studies to organize an international conference on the various aspects of late abdul hamid abu suleiman sahab in future so that our future generations know about this great man his contribution and all his works lastly i pray to almighty allah to forgive his for shortcomings and accept his all contribution his academic in, uh, administrative uh, reformative and other uh, and make every step of his good deeds as sadqa jariya and grant him highest place in jannatul firdaus this was uh, the these were my views thank you so much wa akhir dawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin thank you professor hasha for your very emotional uh presentation and then uh presenting some of the facets of the personality of uh, dr abdul hamid abu suleiman uh, now i have uh, with me uh, one of the very fine scholars uh and uh, yeah, i i have only one edge uh, which i would like to say i am his elder brother uh, otherwise he is uh, you know very dear scholar Uh, i mean uh, he is uh, uh, professor dr hamidullah marazi hamid nasim rafi abadi is professor and head department of religious studies central university kashmir uh, and uh, yeah, he is uh, very renowned and uh, uh, very motivating and uh, uh, he has also shaped many uh, lives uh, in in his career he is uh, too much giving heart to his students uh, i invite him i think he will be very good to comment on the occasion and and present some facets of the personality of dr abdul hamid abu suleiman over to professor dr hamidullah maraz hamid saab auz billah min ash-shaitan ar-rajim bismillahirrahmanirrahim am i audible yes Okay, and we. How do I make a change? Why am I here? Thank you, Professor Abdulani Tab. Uh, first of all, I am very thankful to in the shoot of Abdul Sadiq, especially Dr. Abdulani Tab, uh, for giving me chance to speak on a epoch-making personality of our time. Uh, Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman, Rahmatullah. I have seen him only once uh, in 2007 uh, in uh, a conference of uh, iOS New Delhi, and I found a top-notch scholar speaking in the language of Ibn Khaldun. Sometimes more than Ibn Khaldun, let me say it. It may be not an exaggeration. Ibn Khaldun has talked about Asmiya, but uh, Abu Hamid, Abu Suleiman has talked about Asala. A very very new concept he has brought for first time by uh, him only and no one else so far. And uh, what he meant by asala, that was reordering priority and respecting methodology. 
he was more concerned with the methodology because mostly our problem in academics has had been methodology. Ibn Khaldun long back had developed a methodology how to study history, how to study civilization, how civilizations rise and fall. Suleiman, Abu Suleiman, uh, Dr. Abu Hamid, uh, Abu Suleiman has uh, tried to bring everything back to Quran. And rather than seeing things from the civilizational perspective, he saw everything from the Quranic perspective. He was the person who for the first time talked about Islamic knowledge. Although before him, people like uh, Nakib Latas, he had also talked about uh, Islamic knowledge. And uh, a professor, Ismail Raji Faruqi, he has even written even a track on the subject criticism. But uh, Suleiman Abu Hamid, he is Abu Hamid Abu Suleiman, he has just uh, given a practical shape uh, to this idea. And he used this Islam alone. And this was a great contribution of him. Apart from that, he built an institution, as has been like said by many of my friends and critics, that he was an institutional builder. To build an institution is very difficult task. We may talk about theory and other such type of lofty ideas, but to put those ideas into practice is the most difficult thing. And he was a practical man in that sense, very realistic, very pragmatic, and a very forthcoming with ideas as the solution to the problem. The story is related about him by Dr. Manzul Alam and Dr. Sharon Qasim. Uh, Dr. Khadir Kirzin, who also uh, has spoken here. I have come to know that this is a man who put inspiration, inspired generation. And being from Mecca, as has been said by Professor Kamal Hassan, he was universal and global in thought. And because Mecca has been the cradle of uh, Islamic civilization. And from there, every thought has, uh, that has appeared and that, has, uh, that was disseminated to the whole world. So this man who was born in Mecca in 1936, his areas became universal in his book, Crisis in Muslim Mind, one of the greatest books of the Ghazali's Al-Munkiz Minas Zalal and Ayal and also, uh, you know, I say Ibn Khaldun's book that is uh, Al-Muqaddimah and other such type of books which have come for uh, by great uh, scholars of Islam. And his conception that there is no struggle between reason and revelation, Elmul Kalam and Fiqh, this is a great contribution of the great man. Lot of division was made between reason and revelation. This was because of the bifurcation of uh, Islamic power from Quran and revelation. He brought this culture back that there can't be any uh, struggle between reason and revelation, Elmul Kalam and Fiqh because he was talking about Islam as not knowledge, that we have to take back knowledge to its roots, that's Quran, that's Sunnah. And Quran is the source of all knowledge Muslims have, and Prophet's life is the model for Muslims to emulate. And this was a very great, you know, innovative area, Ishtahadi view, which he has presented before the world. Uh, more than that, his a book on international relations that reminds us of uh, the views of Ibn Khaldun, as I already mentioned, and although uh, there has been, the views have been also accepted by Khuduri, but the views of Khuduri have been not that much compatible to the Islamic vision as of uh, uh, Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman, and he has said that it's only Islam which can give a theory of relation which in the contemporary or only source for peace and these, because these all views of Islam, teachings of Islam talk about the common origin of man and common origin of the human destiny. I think that we need to present these views in the global perspective because these all ideas have global implications. And we need a global thinker. We need a scholar who we can present as this, you know, his views can be presented as a specimen before the world and his books tell parent relationship. The book was gifted to me by Dr. Habib Kirdin during one of my visits to Indonesia, where I was just trying to conduct uh, workshops on textbooks, and I was taking a lot of help from his books, uh, of the media of Suleiman books, Suleiman's books, and that helped me a great deal. So this book 
is also one of the very important books he has talked about, and hardly any Muslim in our time has talked on these very important issues, how to bring up a new generation of Muslims who can lead an Islamic life themselves and also make their children also the representatives of Islamic power and wealth and charm. So these all factors taken together and the views which have been presented by great scholars, uh, starting from, you know, Kamal Hassan Sahib and from uh, Hatim Malkawi and Dr. Manzul Alam and Dr. Habib Khizid and uh, Abu Talib and others, I can say that uh, let us make this man as a best man for our scholars of modern times and make his thought, model thought for others and have institutions on his uh, work uh, to be built. And because there is uh, there is a lot of scope in his thought for institution building in modern times. And one point which I will end with that, as has been said by Amman Amadouji in one of his articles, had Shahullah Dalvi been born in the West, he would have been made by the Western people as an institution. So in most cases of Muslim world, when we have great personalities like uh, and the legendary personalities like Abdul uh, Hamid uh, Sulaiman, we may mourn his death for some days, some months, some years, even. But the best tribute to this great personality will be let us take his mission ahead. And the people who have been working with him, uh, among them, uh, we have Jabir Almani, and uh, there are lead people also, and especially Smaraji Faruqi. Let us make his mission uh, the uh, mission of our life and make this area of integration of knowledge, some of the knowledge, uh, to push it into a universal moment. Because this is the only solution to the problems of Muslims if we really want to live a respectable life uh, in the world, to have knowledge based on our own resources, rather than emulating just blindly, as uh, we have been doing in most cases, and Islamic University of Malaysia and international Islamic uh, thought can just uh, uh, sponsor this moment worldwide. And at every part of the world, we need to have knowledge and work should be taken ahead. And especially his emphasis was always on writing of textbooks. And let us have more attention towards writing textbooks so that his dreams are realized in uh, 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 letter and spirit. And that can be the best tribute to the great soul because these people inspire generations. Now it is the duty of uh, the people whom they have left behind, apart from great family, our sister Mona and uh, his other relatives, all of us who are his children, I should say, children, ideological children, it is our duty to take that mission to its logical conclusion and contribute our lot to separate that message to the whole world and also add more on the areas he has present knowledge and make experiments with his uh, great theories. So with these words, I once again, uh, uh, feel, feel my you know, gratitude towards uh, the Institute of Abdul Studies, Dr. Mandalam. And I am also very thankful to Dr. Abdul Awanisa and my sister uh, Hasina Asha and all others, and Dr. Habib and others who are here and they enlightened us by their great ideas and inspiring ideas, especially those great people who have seen uh, Professor uh, Abdul Hamid Abdul Suleiman and they have related their Thank you very much. May Allah make his soul rest in the sea and peace and give him the best stations in paradise. Thank you. Jazakallah, Hamid Saab. And uh, I think uh, this was a, a, a very good exploration of the personality, thought, writings, uh, and then. Uh, the academic voyage and then search for the talent, uh, then shaping the thought, then getting things here and there. Uh, a great man is presented uh, all around uh, in, in all that. And I think things should not be lost. Persons are also very important. Knowledge is important. Thought is important. Ideas are important, but they are reflected in a personality. Uh, and and that uh, a collective reflection of knowledge uh, that should not be lost. I think we have to learn to respect uh, the the uh, the scholars uh, also uh, because uh, that takes the thought ahead to other generations, uh, and there are different ways to do it. 
uh, I believe I would pray to Allah that Allah give us the understanding that how to carry forward the knowledge and how to respect the, the people whom you have given knowledge because you are the source of knowledge. You see the people where it is to be given. Nobody can get any knowledge without the wish of Allah. And therefore, it is from Allah. With whom it is, it is from Allah. Uh, so uh, we have to carry it. This is a very great gift from Almighty Allah. Now I am going to Professor Dr. Jamil Faroqi, who has been uh, formerly uh, with the of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences at IIU Malaysia. Uh, and uh, I think avoiding any details about his career and uh, best performance, I request Professor Jamil Farooqi Saab to kindly come forward and speak to us, your mind, on the departure of, heavenly departure of, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. What do you think? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Lalami. A salat was lam la Sayyid al Mustaleen. Wa Khatim al Nabiim. Sayyid na Muhammadin. Sallallahu alayhi wa la alihi wa sahabihi al Nay. Respected Dr. Mandud Alam, the chairman of the objective study. I am respected audience. It is the saddest event that Professor Abdul Hadith Abu Suleiman, an eminent scholar, a distinguished educationist, a noted reformer, an illustrious man of knowledge, is not with us. He met his Lord. His demise created the Gulf, and it is very difficult to bridge the gulf. His demise is a great loss to the academic world in general and to the Muslim world in particular. He is such type of person about which Allama Iqbal said that after great difficulty, a man of vision comes into being. Professor Abdul Hamid Abdul Suleiman made valuable contribution to the development of knowledge. His outstanding contribution is the restructuring of knowledge in an Islamic normative and epistemological framework. He developed the idea in 1980, and since then, he devoted his, his, his life to develop the idea, promote the idea, and made it a practical and made it practical. Abdul Hamid Abi Suleiman studied Muslim situation in detail. He observed it minutely and found that the patriarch situation of Muslims is due to the fact that they fail to develop knowledge in context of modern problem and modern development of knowledge. Muslims are now the consumer of knowledge. They are not the producer of knowledge. And if, they, if a community is not the producer of knowledge, it always remains under the domination of others. The same case is with Muslims. If we study Muslim society, we find two types of persons and two types of intellectual and scholars. One is expert of traditional knowledge, but they're not equipped with modern knowledge, history and methodology. The other guru is expert of modern knowledge, but it is not equipped with the traditional knowledge. As a matter of fact, we find differences in the mindsets of Muslims. And sometimes it also creates contradiction in meeting the new challenges of modern time. The need is that both type of knowledge should be integrated into one and develop a comprehensive system that shall be able 
to produce good Muslim and best professional. On achieving this noble goal, Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman was very much interested to develop international institute of Islamic thought and invited famous scholars to produce relevant literature and develop knowledge in an Islamic perspective. The institute produced high standard of books that inspired young generation to study Islam in new perspective. The institute has also started to publish an international journal of Islamic thought, which became very popular within a short time and considered an important, uh, and ref important reference journal to study Islam and Muslim society. Abdul Habib Abu Sulaiman was further invited to take challenging responsibility of the Rector of International Islamic University, Malaysia. He did this job with great devotion and acumen. He revolutionized the system of education. He organized high standard of seminar, invited experts of different disciplines, discussed at length the changes that are required in the courses and curriculum of the university. As a result, he succeeded to develop the courses and syllabi according to the Islamic perspective. And he integrated Islamic studies with human sciences and established a new faculty known as Kulli of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. That Tulia was the core and inspired the people of all scholars of other disciplines to develop their subjects and disciplines in a new perspective, particularly in, the, in an Islamic perspective. Further, he also developed other faculties like faculty of engineering, medicine, architect, science, information science, and other. He invited great scholars to impart knowledge to students and also motivated the students to join the university and pursue different courses. The result was that the university produced good scholars and good professionals who are working at high position in different countries of the world, particularly in the United States of America, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. His further, contrib his further his contribution was that he established a research center, provided funds to scholars to conduct research on different problems and develop knowledge in a new perspective that also produced important works that influenced the group of thinkers and intellectuals in the world. The other important uh, contribution of Abdul Hamid Abed Suleiman is that he developed a beautiful, he managed to develop a beautiful campus of the university. The campus is known as the combination of Islamic and modern architect. It shows and expresses an impression of his idea of integration, two types of cultures and two types of knowledge. The campus is unique because it is combination of modern and traditional archi and Muslim architect. The beauty of the campus is that mosque is located at the center of the campus and surrounded by all faculties and departments. From here, persons concerned can go to mass within no time, attend the prayer and attend seminars and discussion or night time to time. 
such a great person is not amongst us. It is a great loss to us. He is now dead. But the fact is that he is still alive in our heart and soul. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him highest reward for his valuable contribution to the development of knowledge. And I grant him high place in paradise or genital for three dogs. Amen. In the last, I express gratitude to Dr. Mandur Alam, the chairman of Objective Study, for organizing this committee to pay homage to this great person. Uh, I, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and to bless the Institute of Objective Study and develop it a center of high learning to fulfill the dream of great Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah, Professor Jamil Faroqi Saab, for your uh, description of this great personality in your own way. As you have observed him uh, in, the, in, in the university itself, uh, through his writings and sayings and uh, through his campaigns and, and all efforts and uh, also giving good uh, wishes to the Institute of Objective Studies uh, and uh, to Chairman, uh, we are grateful to you for all that. Uh, now uh, we have with us a very fine scholar uh, who is keenly uh, watching the developments in economics, uh, in technology, in uh, finance, uh, in uh, politics, uh, and and all that uh, with 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 very uh, great keenness, and especially with the developments at UN, uh, like uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, and 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 we have a great you know expectations also from him uh, for in many reasons and I think he is uh, trying to get to all that um, and 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 come up uh, as the best uh, in in this academic world and and contribute a lot in future. I mean it's Dr. Kaleem Alam uh, who is a res uh, researcher at. Islamic Economics uh, Institute, King Abdul Aziz University, Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, I invite him to uh, give his uh, impressions uh, on uh, this uh, uh, departure of you know, the legendary personalities in the Islamic world. Uh, I mean, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Over to you, Dr. Kaleem Alam. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Wan, Professor Wani. Thank you very much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him with Jannat al Firdos, Dr. Abdul Hamid al Suleiman. I was fortunate enough to attend his uh, Janaza to the Jannat al Mala. Um, let me start with the university. I've, I've noted down a few points to speak very quickly as we have already crossed three and a half, uh, three hours, 20 minutes now. Right. Yeah. Uh, when I was going to the university, for leaving the Delhi University, my maternal uncle, he told me, why, why Malaysia, why Islamic University? It's a very small university. Why do you want to go there? It's much smaller than not even a quarters, quarter of Delhi University. And, uh, and as it is in, in North, since I was educated in Chennai, Chennai, people know Malaysia very well. But in Delhi, I found people who are not aware of Malaysia and its development and the university or education in Malaysia. So even he was not impressed with me going for the university. And indeed, the campus was very small, the old campus in Petalingjaya. But recently, when I met the same uncle, I mean, uh, just before the COVID-19 
started and he was telling me you know your your university in malaysia is, is one of the best universities i have heard a lot of uh, praise for it and he was very happy and he was full of praise for the university so this this contribution goes to dr abdul hamid abu suleiman from bring it, building up this reputation of the university and its campus i mean i was fortunate enough to see both the campus i mean it was in my pe- period when the transit took place and we moved from old campus to new campus and the way the campus was developed and his dedication so big con- uh, 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 praise for his uh, contribution goes to abdul hamid abu suleiman and the coming from india at that time i mean when uh, very uh, it was the first day or the second day when we were going for the lunch i mean at the old campus dr jamil faruqi sahab is here he knows the we used to have the lunch on the on the the campus side where all people would be standing in the queue in I found Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman also standing in the queue being a rector, which was something very odd for us. I mean, from India, it is unexpected of the vice chancellor to stand in the queue and uh, take his food and then go and eat. So that, that, was, that shows his humble personality. I mean, it was, I, I, I went to him, I told him, I mean, you can come to the front. And he said, no, no. everyone is equal here so let me stand so there was another something different which he was and there there was some crisis when i i mean the first first semester when i was in malaysia i found a lot of things which uh, took place in that period the one very difficult thing was triple it office was burnt by some students they were not happy with it and uh, But the way he handled it, alhamdulillah, without expressing too much of anger and very smoothly he managed it. Uh, he came to the campus late at night and everything was managed. It. And that, uh, I mean, as we have been hearing uh, the way he was dedicated to the university in some of the talks, I mean, people also called him, him saying that, I mean, he, uh, his wife saying that he's married to the university itself. So that was his dedication to the university. And one of the things which I remember was the, I mean, in, you know, in our university, we normally never used to, I mean, the boys or girls teach, will not shake hands. So once he was presenting a prize, a certificate, and his daughter was receiving the certificate, And then suddenly she forwarded her hand for a handshake. <laughs> and, and we could see that he was suddenly surprised what to do. Then he shook the hand and everyone clapped it. So it was, and I remember him always, I, I, the, the only thing I remember him is, is his smiling face. That is, a, is in my mind every time. Whenever I remember him, his smiling face is there in front of me. And in 2000, then i think when he was, was in india to record some of the you know, for for the future generations the video recording i had the opportunity to be with him for some time so he was saying the the only thing he regretted was not being able to personally execute was the course in parenting and mashallah in 2013 or 14 i think he with dr uh, umar uh, Talib and Dr. Hijab Talib, they brought out the book on parenting, which is another very good book. And uh, I appreciate International Islamic University for proposing to name the Islamic uh, Reveal Knowledge after him, inshallah. Okay. May Allah reward him with Jannat al-Firdos and reward best of both the worlds to his family and children. grandchildren thank you assalamu alaikum jazakallah khair dr kaleem alam uh, i i i would say you are uh, uh, 
the response and your uh, uh, impressions uh, at the moment, they were very important uh, to reflect uh, a thoughtful person, uh, a, a conscious person about uh, norms, uh, and then at the same time uh, being uh, himself in his uh, uh, deeds as a messenger. And uh, not merely a thought leader through his writings uh, and other things. I think uh, uh, these are very notable things and, and they uh, explore one of the very important aspects of the personality of Dr. Abdul Hamid uh, Ahmed Abu Suleiman. Uh, we are grateful to you for your contribution uh, to this condolence meeting. Uh, and I think uh, with that, uh, we completed uh, this uh, uh, having uh, responses and contribution at the moment uh, from various uh, speakers. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I can say from uh, all what you said uh, about uh, this uh, uh, Abu, uh, Dr. Abu Suleiman's being in II. Uh, you Malaysia. Uh, I think that, you know, uh, when he was there, it did really add to the, uh, you know, bright image uh, of the country in the rest of the world. I think institutions uh, and personalities, uh, they give honor and respect. They add to the honor and respect of a nation. Uh, when there is uh, a knowledge creation, uh, when there is a promotion of thought, uh, when there is promotion of uh, human resource and personalities, uh, then definitely uh, I, 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 I believe that and practically it can be seen that because of his being in IIU, uh, its image was uh, brightened and made visible in the whole of the world. And with that, I can say that the image of uh, the, the country uh, the whole of Malaysia uh, that, that, that improved in the hearts and minds of the people elsewhere. I think we have to uh, learn a lot uh, from the contributions of Dr. Abdul Hamid uh, Abu Suleiman uh, and, and the task, uh, you know, I think as done by Dr. Muhammad Manzoor Alam uh, in this part of the world, uh, I think it's, uh, of course, definitely uh, he is enjoying his own originality of thought. He is enjoying his own uh, vision and experiences. Uh, he, uh, I would say he may have learned, but he is a, uh, a contributor also. Uh, and, and he is also, if uh, we can we will look to the academic and research contribution of in this Institute of Objective Studies for the last 30 uh, six years, 35 years, we can find out that a lot of knowledge has been created uh, and in that uh, there have been the contributions in terms of thought, in terms of uh, motivations, in terms of incentives uh, from people across the globe and one of them has been uh, Dr. Uh, Abdul Hamid uh, Abu Suleiman uh, and uh, and that's how we, we must appreciate his personality. Uh, and uh, as, as was suggested earlier, uh, that definitely uh, there will be programs and more exploration of uh, the personality thought and contribution of this great leader. Uh, as uh, I was also supposed to speak on the occasion, I would not, I, I have been, uh, you know, uh, requesting uh, different speakers, and then uh, I said few things in between, uh, but I would not like to uh, end this meeting without uh, saying one important thing, uh, that uh, I think a, a person, when he writes something, uh, writing is uh, very important. One, uh, while speaking also, one is always careful, reflecting his mind, but when one writes, uh, that's, that's with more concern. Uh, that's uh, with uh, uh, more conscientiousness. That's uh, more reflective of the personality. Uh, and that's how uh, when I give a look to the English publications, 
of Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman and if, if this book of uh, 2013, Parent-Child Relations uh, is seen, uh, that you can, you can see a guide to raising children. You can, you can think of a man, a real uh, leader of humanity. Uh, this time, this aspect of life is facing a lot of crisis and he is sensitive to it. Uh, as you know, the world over, we find people writing fictions, we find uh, people are lost in uh, different other kinds of writings, but a man who could have any kind of enjoyment in life uh, is very keenly looking uh, to this basic institution uh, of humanity, uh, that's uh, family, which is, the which is based on, dependent on uh, parent-child relations. And I think you can find in him a very sensitive teacher, uh, not only of the university level, but also uh, of, of the uh, preliminary and primary levels uh, and whom he, he, he is uh, so much concerned about the personality development, human development, that right from the home he wants uh, that parents should have a contribution and that should be their first priority. Uh, that how to, uh, you know, bring up children and how to maintain the relationships. And that then uh, goes to the higher levels. Uh, and at the same time, uh, if you find uh, that there are so many cultural problems in the world, if, if after uh, the challenges which are uh, faced by family in the present day world, uh, we, we find culture is very important. And if there is really anybody, a leader of humanity, he would definitely uh, think of culture because ultimately it is then the culture after the family, it's the culture that is shaping a personality. And he has been very much sensitive to it and being a very sensitive Muslim, a rational Muslim, a thinking Muslim, uh, and um, a, a learned Muslim uh, and with, with all uh, elements of leadership, uh, he is taking that, a world view from the Holy Quran, uh, and and then he is talking of cultural reforms, uh, and that's uh, I I I can see uh, that how great and 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 a personality with in depth understanding of uh, humanity, human beings, uh, and and future uh, and contemporary world, how how great he has been, and then uh, you know. Uh, in families you can find in India, uh, maybe if you, even if you, you look to Delhi, uh, that the most of the matters in courts are on uh, this matrimonial matters. Uh, there are uh, marital discords in families uh, too much. And uh, the family courts are now also uh, overflown with the files of matrimonial discords, uh, and they don't find any. Uh, you know, immediate, find solutions to them. Uh, I, I appreciate the mind and efforts and concern of uh, uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman uh, that he is looking to it, uh, that how, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, this aspect of, uh, of life is to be seen and then uh, how uh, Islam and its uh, understanding and its uh, practical aspects uh, can uh, enable humanity uh, to take to this big task of minimizing at least the matrimonial discard uh, and, and having a dignified life at home, having a peaceful life at home and across. Uh, so, and then, uh, you know, having taken uh, the whole, uh, this Muslim community uh, overall in, in the world, uh, he, when he talks of crisis in the Muslim mind, that means, uh, again, uh, he has been a scholar uh, who, who is looking to different factors uh, which shape the human life, which shape the culture, which, shape, which ultimately affect the overall functioning of the institutions of life, whether it is uh, economy, whether it is politics, whether it is uh, uh, so social, social relations, uh, or it, it is faith or whatever. Uh, so uh, he has been very much uh, concerned and it, it reflects that he has picked up his pen 
on that and has pinned down uh, on on this very important aspect uh, and and then as as a political scientist as he originally had been uh, with a doctorate in that uh, i think while writing theory of international relations islamic theory uh, then definitely he has tried to bring humanity together and uh, then he has clarified many things uh, which people would have liked to know uh, as uh, um, uh, and and he is very balanced in his uh, writings uh, and 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 the people uh, have many uh, uh, ideas which have crept in into the thought of the muslims uh, and then uh, the 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 real vision of islam has been blurred uh, there but i think his his writings are clarifying many things uh, but i would like to say that he leaves scope for some other opinion also i will not say differences uh, or like that i would say another opinion uh, it's there but we uh, the muslims of the world and all human beings of the world we have to learn uh, to appreciate uh, this uh, creation of knowledge creation of thought uh, and 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 not to think of it that everything written by another person said by another person that should mean in full conformity with our opinions no uh, we have to see how much uh, you know in depth thought how much rationality how much reason how much considerate and how much influencing the other thought is uh, and and that way i find uh, that abdul hamid abu sulaiman has been a very great thought leader uh, for for the world and he should be recognized from uh, that way uh, and on his uh, uh, birth in mecca and on his journey back to jannatul uh, mala uh, i think that is worth probing that is worth understanding uh, and and i think uh, there should be a very serious attempt Uh, to to see what he saw to understand what he understood uh, and then uh, also to see uh, that uh, that how much uh, we can uh, use that experience that knowledge that understanding uh, because he he did uh, look to the world across the globe and he he looked to it not only as a traveler but as a performer he was a doer uh, he did it uh, and and that way we find a great guide in him uh, definitely he must not, not have written many things which one would uh, not ordinarily write in his life because of various engagements uh, but the people who were close to him and his own children his own progeny i believe uh, they must pick up their pen or must have the stroke on the laptop and write down uh, the various experiences and whatever they have observed uh, i i would say that will be very much beneficial uh, for for the people of the world uh, generally and in particular with those uh, who are very much concerned for down trodden underdeveloped and especially uh, the umma uh and and that's how how we have to go with it uh and with this uh, uh i would like to uh thank uh all those who contributed to this meeting and uh, the first and the foremost dr mohammad manzoor alam uh, from india uh, the chairman of the institute of objective studies he is an inspiration in himself uh and i believe that uh he he did definitely contribute uh, in a big way uh, to the uh, research and uh, then to uh, this uh, you know knowledge creation uh, okay he contributed in a big way Uh, to knowledge in this part of the world uh, i believe i am audible to all of you uh, and uh, and and he he did uh, you know 
Uh, in a way, I, I am a witness to it for the last 35 years. Uh, he provided a platform to the scholars across the, across the country and also definitely to some from other countries uh, and, and different university scholars who wanted to write, who wanted to do research and project it. Uh, the Institute of Objective Study definitely provided space to them to grow and various programs which were organized by hundreds of them in the last 35 years, they have definitely groomed various persons and, and that's how he has been uh, doing like uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. We wish him a long life and contribution uh, to uh, this research and academics in this country. Uh, we had with us uh, Dr. Datuk Shari Anwar Ibrahim uh, from Malaysia, former Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, we are grateful to him for his joining for the meeting. Uh, and, and he is also a, a very good human being and too much interested in developing research and knowledge creation uh, in those jurisdictions uh, where we find that uh, this is not the first priority with the people. Uh, so we, we are very much uh, finding an enthusiastic uh, contributor to knowledge uh, and nourisher of the talent. Uh, we are grateful to you, Datuk Shri Anwar Ibrahim. We had with us uh, Dr. Hisham uh, Al-Talib from USA, and he also uh, very, uh, you know, with, with all emotions uh, gave his impressions, and, and we are grateful to you and wish that you continue to contribute for long. We had with us Professor Omar Hassan Kasoli, senior uh, from Saudi Arabia. We know him with, for his association with uh, IIIT USA and for his being a, a very good medical doctor also, uh, and, and, and that way a very good human being and a scholar also. Uh, we are grateful to you and pray to Allah that you make uh, great con contributions and good contributions uh, to uh, the academics uh, in your uh, career. And may it be too long so that we benefit from your uh, understanding and experience. Uh, we had uh, with us uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ahmed Al Wani, uh, and and uh, I don't uh, remember whether he spoke on the occasion or he was not available. And, but at the same time, there was Mr. Siraj Hussain. Uh, we are grateful to him for his uh, brief comments. He had to leave, uh, and we are grateful for uh, attending the program to uh, Dr. Ayman Abu Suleiman and Dr. Mona Abu Suleiman. Uh, definitely, we had uh, thought of uh, listening to them, but definitely, uh, you know, uh, we, we also understand uh, that when our heart is heavy, uh, their heart must also be very heavy. Uh, they lost uh, a great father, but let me tell them that they lost him only physically. Uh, he is alive. He shall remain alive. His thought shall be a leader, uh, and then you can also be very good contributors to continue his efforts uh, as, as we have the concepts of Sadkai Jaria and, and other things. Uh, and uh, Dr. Abu Suleiman has his, uh, you know, uh, 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 students and then uh, friends across the globe. Uh, and, and his legacy will be carried forward and you can also uh, make your contributions to that. Dr. Habib uh, uh, Kirzin from Indonesia, uh, he was uh, very much uh, uh, very objective uh, in, in his presentations and in his impressions uh, and very much enthusiastic also uh, and we are grateful to him for that. Uh, then uh, Dr. Umar Hisham Al-Talib from USA, uh, he was also 
uh, very much emotional and we are grateful to him for his contribution to the program. Dr. Zaid uh, Berzinji, uh, who talked of uh, uh, this maqasid, uh, and, and I think that's a very important uh, aspect and, 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 a, and, and it's uh, altogether uh, a, a kind of another method of accessing to knowledge, uh, another way of uh, creating knowledge with purpose, uh, which is not generally done. There is in the world academics for the sake of academics. Uh, I think uh, that may remain there, but at the same time, when it is the question of uh, beneficial knowledge, then objectives must be in mind. Uh, we are grateful to you, Dr. Zaid Berzinji, for your uh, contribution to the meeting. And Dr. Uh, Zaliha Binti Kamaruddin, a former rector of uh, IIU uh, Malaysia, uh, we are grateful to her. Uh, and, and she could uh, uh, tell us uh, that how Dr. Uh, Abu Sulaiman could uh, trace the talent and then nourish it and then provide the future human, best human resource uh, to the institutions, to the nations, and uh, to humanity. Uh, and uh, like that, we had uh, with us uh, Professor Kutub uh, Mustafa Sanu from Saudi Arabia. I think like uh, Dr. Uh, Zaliha, we had uh, him also. He was also uh, very much meticulous about his impressions uh, and uh, as as a student uh, he he did uh, show his uh, sincerity and faithfulness to the great teacher and i believe uh, that he has made his life a mission to carry forward uh, the legacy of uh, dr abdul hamid abu sulaiman uh, and that's uh, quite appreciable uh, because uh, it's it's always very important uh, that we if if knowledge passes on like a chain and and not only imitative but also with uh, uh, with innovation uh, then it's a very good understanding of one's teacher and teachers teachers and like that uh, that that was very good and I hope it it continues and then Professor Zadem Khan. Uh, here from India, uh, the Secretary General of the Institute of Objective Studies. Uh, he also uh, talked of uh, his meeting and then uh, the contribution of uh, Dr. Abu um, Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman uh, in motivating and in incentivizing uh, the talent in not only elsewhere but also in India. Uh, and and his uh, defining of uh, the approach to the understanding of uh, the Quran and Islam, uh, that was a very good contribution to the meeting. We are grateful to you, Professor Zadam Khan, for, for that. Uh, Professor Hasina Hashia, the Assistant Secretary General of the Institute of Objective Studies, uh, they reminded us uh, the, about the visits of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman uh, at the behest and to the Institute of Objective Studies uh, and how he was, uh, uh, you know, a, a motivator and at the same time how he was having a great understanding uh, and then his liveliness and she compared uh, the thought with that of uh, Dr. Sir Muhammad Iqbal. Uh, I think uh, his his worry, his concern about uh, arousing, awakening the conscience, the feelings uh, of uh, the, 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 the best of the ummah. Uh, I think, uh, and that, that was uh, the main uh, thing that was presented by Professor Hasha. And then Professor Hamid Nasim Rafi Abadi from India, uh, he uh, did uh, present the waves uh, of uh, the earlier thinkers and uh, uh, that of uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman, uh, and and that that's that was academic-like uh, kind of uh, uh, situation 
that we must always appreciate uh, that that we we must know what earlier was said uh, what are the difference in methodology uh, what can be their called it's not necessary to follow the same methodology i think uh, it should change with time purpose occasion uh, to make it useful i think we have to learn uh, from uh, dr uh, abdul hamid uh, uh, abu sulaiman uh, that how to uh, you know uh, see the the requirements of the age requirements of the times uh, and then uh, the issues in the contemporary world and then accordingly go with it with the experience of earlier thinkers uh, in umma uh, in the field of knowledge Uh, so we are grateful to you professor hamid nasim sahab for your contribution uh, and then professor jamil farooqi uh, was really you know enthusiastic and he was calling spade a spade uh, all the steps taken by uh, dr abdul hamid uh, abu sulaiman in malaysia uh, and uh, and how he uh, took uh, that that institution from uh, that being as uh, dr kaleem was saying uh, from a very small uh, institution to a very big institution and today we can say this is one of the not only the largest but one of the best universities in the world uh, and uh, it it is it has all the faculties giving worldly knowledge it has all the faculties which are connecting Uh, the the humanity with the creator uh, and then it is uh, as the 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 need of the times is value based education i think on that we can count uh, that this uh, iiu uh, is having that orientation to what extent it's uh, you know successful in that uh, that uh, i'll not comment on that uh but i can say my impression my personal impression is it is successful in that uh and uh, i think we have to focus that and the legacy of uh, dr abdul hamid abu sulaiman uh it it should be carried forward uh and then uh, i think one of the visitors to the university uh when that the dean of the faculty of law told me Uh, that we have put the mosque uh, uh, in the center, and the faculties are around it. Uh, and uh, and the first thing when anybody is uh, reaching the university, the first thing he sees is the mosque there. So because we believe that whole knowledge is from Almighty, uh, and uh, that's how uh, we have placed it. And the architect is also very important. Uh, i i believe that uh, dr abdul hamid abu sulaiman must have definitely contributed uh, because uh, uh, the old campus uh, was there uh, probably that was placed in earlier buildings which were constructed not necessarily for the university uh, they had started the institution there uh, but uh, when we went to the new campus we found it was all shaped Uh, in a different way uh, that's how I, i i believe that it must be learned by uh, by by anybody and especially by the muslims of the world uh, that uh, their shaping of towns villages cities uh, that should be reflective of human values that should be reflective of divine guidance uh, i i i I'm, i'm not saying merely that the mosque is to be put in the center uh, no Uh, i think uh, what is to be learned in the mosque must be put in the center of behavior uh, in in activities in i was uh, as 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 prophet would have liked it to do it so long okay Uh, there are now disturbances in connectivity uh, and uh, i think that's a message that uh, there has been much time and i am grateful to you jamil farooqi saab uh, and wish you a long life uh, and and keep uh, making contributions and then 
uh, Dr. Kaleem Alam uh, uh, from uh, this uh, King Abdulaziz University, Saudi Arabia. Uh, I personally have a lot of uh, uh, expectations from him and pray to Almighty that give him uh, good qualities uh, so that uh, he becomes a good uh, this leader of uh, true academics, uh, and he has taken very important disciplines uh, which are very much influencing in today's world, uh, like uh, economics, banking, and then UN activities, and so many other things, uh, and and uh, scaling, and and evaluation. Uh, I think uh, he has put himself in a in a very uh, right uh, that frame. Uh, and we pray to Almighty that give him the strength uh, and wisdom to do all that. Uh, and we are grateful to you, Dr. Kaleem, for joining us uh, today. And then uh, I, I should not miss Dr. Fathi Malkavi, uh, because uh, we generally talk of him sometimes uh, uh, in, in uh, IOS uh, Institute of Objective Studies. Uh, we know him as a good scholar and is presently uh, with I, uh, IIIT Jordan. Uh, and we are grateful to you for joining uh, and uh, giving your impressions on the occasion. <clears throat> and I, I would say that I should not miss uh, giving thanks to the uh, staff of uh, this Institute of Objective Studies, um, uh, this um, uh, Mr. Atawur Rahman, and then, uh, Mansoor Saab, who is uh, technically uh, giving us the opportunity to have all these programs and others. Uh, and we are grateful to all of them and pray to Allah to give them more uh, ability and capacity. And then all those who join, uh, we, we may pray to Allah, oh Allah, uh, we may have a lot of knowledge, but uh, it's a drop in the ocean. Uh, give us more knowledge, increase us in knowledge, increase us in humility, increase us in uh, compassion, increase us uh, in, uh, in, in sincerity, in commitment, and make us the models uh, for all the humanity uh, uh, with persuasiveness uh, and, and, and as uh, uh, as as an automatic uh, that incentivizers of thought, rightful thought, uh, and give grace to us, give grace to uh, all what is related to faith. Uh, and oh Lord, oh Allah, accept our prayer. Uh, Amin, summa Amin. With that, I thank all of you again. And then I request to all of you that keep praying for an institute of objective studies, that it, it remains a good, it, it develops into a very good source of knowledge and understanding for the people around, they need it and, and remain associated with it, contribute whatever you can. Uh, so Allah bless you all. Uh, and, and that's, uh, uh, I think with that, we have to attend our families also. Uh, and uh, we have to uh, many other things to do. Uh, and that's the reality of life. Uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, uh, you were born in Mecca. You traveled across the world. And then I saw you, few people carrying you uh, back to Jannatul Mala. And uh, 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 this is the story of life. So something, anything, it has to end somewhere. Uh, but let us pray to Almighty, uh, make that journey meaningful uh, so that you remain happy with us. And when we come back to you, you reward us with, with the best. Uh, and that's uh, this program also, uh, this has to now come to an end. And I pray to God we keep meeting in different programs. Uh, uh, and, and, and let us say uh, that all praise is for Allah and his, uh, this, uh, uh, his blessings always for his prophet. 
and 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 we uh, must remain on the faith and god give us the strength to bear all what we have to bear for retaining and maintaining our faith wassalam fi amanillah 